Hi, so I haven't sent this map off to Deep Cut Studios yet. This is the, uh, basically what James, my buddy, made me. It's, it's, it's so awesome. Uh, it's basically, he studied some 1815 stuff, got all the rivers in here, got all the towns, and this is going to be the uh, foundation of our, uh, my computer will struggle a little bit getting there. there the last, this would be the, this would be the map basically for the campaign that we're doing this fictional 1815 stuff. So our last uh, battle was right around here. At, uh, I'm gonna say lose, but it's and. Oh gosh, I'm not even gonna try. Sorry, I'm, I'm not even look at the screen. I was trying to read it. So uh, the French will move north to the northeast as the British uh, have uh, pulled back near Ath or Ath, however you want to pronounce it, and that's where our the battle that we're about to uh, take place uh, is going to occur. So that's kind of cool. Our first General Day Armé battle, and I can actually pronounce the name of the town. So, uh, <laughs> all right, hang on. We'll look at the actual. Uh, I'm just. I love what James did here. It's so. It's so awesome. Okay. Uh, Let's guess. So this is where our battle's going to take place, and uh, we'll show you the battlefield downstairs. And I hope you enjoy it. You guys are fantastic. All right, welcome to Ath. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, sorry, my Dutch is just marginally well. It's a lot worse than my very terrible French. But here's the battlefield. Uh, we're playing on a seven foot uh, by what is this? I always forget. Fifteen foot table. These are 28 millimeter miniatures. Um, we're talking, uh, oh my gosh, way too many battalions each. It's over 3,000 troops, of course. I've added on one fresh brigade of Leger uh, from the last battle I did, which was a Valor and Fortitude game. Um, I've got the flags now on my Russian uh, battalions. This is the 7th Coalition versus the Napoleon and his allies. So uh, uh, it's it's a fictional campaign, but it's a fun campaign. I wouldn't even have gone down this rabbit hole of, uh, you know, I would have continued playing historical battles in the Peninsular campaign I was doing. But uh, Mike Desloray donated a bunch of, uh, well, a lot of French. I think I've got uh, five battalions out of what he sent me. Plus there's all these uh, Russians, Prussians, Austrians. Uh, am I missing somebody? I feel like I am. If I am, I'm sorry if I'm missing your nationality. And then some more English brigades as well. I think I had like four or five English battalions too. Uh, so due to that, I you know I was already not having any Portuguese troops and having Hanoverian troops that really weren't on in the peninsula. I was already kind of like halfway fictional there so uh enough of that that's why i've departed and have gone to this 1815 thing and uh that's where we're at so i'm going to continue to persist in this because i have uh if you see my earlier videos i have a lot of extra troops to assemble that were you know that mike had already painted that got blown apart he got a bunch that were primed i still have troops that from doug carmichael that he gave me so i've got a you know, and they got some of them got blown apart, so I have to continue to be putting them together. Plus, uh, Mike was kind enough to give me probably seven or nine boxes of Prussians and Austrians uh, that I also have to, and some Portuguese. But I'm probably, don't be mad at me, all you uh, Portuguese fans out there, but I'm probably going to try to repurpose those guys into Brunswickers or something and do some convert, do some uh, little bit of kit bashing. Because I wouldn't mind having some uh, uh, Brunswickers. I think that'd be a good combination with the Hanoverians I already have. And they, they go well with the English, too. So here we are in Ath. Um, you can see the battlefield. I had it a little bit lower. Um, I'll go over each unit here in a minute. The main features of the battlefield are this giant hill. Uh, in This is my first game of General Day Armé 2. So this will be a me learning and hopefully reading things and stating rules out loud so you can learn along with me. Hopefully we will both learn correctly 
or all of us together. And uh, I'm going to do three of these battles in a row, and uh, we'll just you know we'll alter the campaign on whoever wins. But uh, there are rules if you can capture an objective that'll affect initiative. So we'll have two different features that will control that. One is this high ground that I'll probably end up calling. I don't know what I'll call it. I'll call it something. But this high ground up here where uh, the Duke of Wellington is located. And then also this built-up area over here, which we're going to make a double built-up area, which you'll have to control both to get... The, the French would have to capture both uh, sections of it to uh, gain the bonus on the initiative. Uh, and that was a, a recommendation from a, a friend of the channel. And uh, I uh, thank him very much for his uh, idea. I think we'll get some good fighting back and forth, just trying to get into the built air area and then fighting and seesawing back and forth, hopefully uh, controlling this area, getting both areas under control. So I think it should be awesome. A French are poised to uh, launch their attack. And I, th I think we have 11 brigades per side. Um, uh, the French, I think are at 39 infantry battalions. Uh, Five cavalry squadrons, uh, and the the uh, seventh coalition forces are probably, I think, at thirty-seven or thirty-eight infantry battalions, and five cavalry squadrons. And they both, I think, they have equal amounts of artillery. So um, yes, the French are attacking. So maybe they they do deserve the extra uh, two battalions. But at this number, you know, you get like thirty-nine battalions. Uh, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> you lose the, you lose that in the wash, I think, but we'll see. Should be, uh, should be good to go. Um, I really think we'll be able to try all the rules from General Day Arme, uh, to, excuse me. Uh, we, well, this will be a core level battle. Both sides have, uh, two divisional commanders, then also a CNC. Uh, it's going to be Wellington against uh, Napoleon, and we'll go over this more in the uh, in the order of battle. But then we have uh, Marshal Ney commanding the uh, French left, the first division. Uh, Marshal Soult commanding the the right, the second or right division. And uh, I didn't have a really good case on, but I have a. Uh, these caissons from the Vitrix miniatures, I just kind of glued onto a cavalry force, and I've got dice marking the uh, the two caissons each division has, and then I've got one extra dice on the side on that base, reflecting the uh, core also has. Uh, Napoleon can donate one uh, a caisson to whichever uh, division he wants to, so we can get some crazy stuff. Also, have the core, we have one core artillery uh, battery for each side. You don't have, don't have two. But that'll be kind of fun. I just didn't have an extra brigade commander, and I don't have enough artillery pieces to do that. So uh, there are a smattering of artillery pieces throughout each side's infantry brigades, and then you've got something like that for the British and the French have theirs on the far right hill over there. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll break down the forces. Um, the French will be looking to... Uh, drive the British farther into uh, Belgium and they're heading towards Brussels and I can't remember how far north uh, James's map goes uh, but uh, we're going to have a blast uh, having lots of uh, Napoleonic battles so uh, yeah just hold on to your hats and uh, uh, please as usual uh, continue to uh, if you see stuff, you're a GDA player or GDA 2 player, you know more than me or you're reading the book and you're more aware of a role that I see me screw up uh, yeah, let me know, um, and I'll uh, I'll we'll just play. Uh, and so it's uh, I'm uh, I'm looking to learn here. So cool, and I'm looking to drill a little bit here because this is awesome. Uh, these are 28 millimeter mini 28 millimeter miniatures, mostly from uh, Perry and Warlord. There's a lot of Vitrix mixed in. Um, I think there's a couple hat miniature. It might be one battalion of hat. There's a couple. Uh, oh, what's the Atlantic? Uh, I can't remember the name of this. It's a War Games Atlantic. Yeah, I've got a couple. Got I use, use uh, skirmishers from that. I think so. The 95th or the 60th Royal American 
is from that. And everything else is really just a mostly parries, which I that's, that's my go to for everything now. Uh, uh, sorry to the other manufacturers; they just really kind of work for me, and I've got a good rhythm with them. And I've I just like the miniatures, <laughs> and I like the amount of miniatures you get in a box. Uh, I don't do 24 man battalions, so the warlord stuff I end up having to buy more stuff, so I can get a. Uh, one of my battalions out of a box of parries with their 40s and 42s and 44s in a box. It works for me. I'd have to buy two from Warlord. So that's it. And we're going to do the orders of battle and we'll show you all the forces and then we'll start doing stuff. So, which is kind of cool as heck. I'm excited. Uh, I'll probably, uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going to do the rolling of the brigade commanders with everybody, uh, with you guys. So you can enjoy the fun of that. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, you will not see the uh, the initiative system, which I think is very uh, very well set up by uh, David Brown. I'm a huge fan of his. So you're going to hear me, uh, you know, basically sucking up about him a lot. He's uh, he if he ran for uh, president of the United States, I would uh, vote for him in this next election for sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I am a fan. Uh, I think he's uh, all and and the two fat lardies guys for bringing this all to us. I think, uh, Rich is, is uh, is amazing too. So, uh, I'll love all their rule sets. Both of them together are fantastic. Uh, this, these terrain maps are from a company that no longer is in business. I, I hope they come back in business. Uh, killing fields terrain is the name of the company. I think you can still see them on Facebook and on Instagram. You can see their mats and their website's still up, but, uh, I've tried to email them. I've tried everything I can to get a hold of them because I would love at some point to buy another one of these mats, and I just haven't had any luck. So I think they just went out of business during the pandemic, which I think a lot of companies did. So, okay, so that's enough of that. Um, so we're going to GDA 2 coming your way. We'll go over all the French. I'm just going to basically go over the brigade um, and the brigade commander, and then we'll roll up how good the commanders are for each one. The overall uh, commander of the uh, French forces uh, and French and Allied forces, which are going to include uh, Swiss, Polish, and Italian, including the French, uh, is going to, of course, be uh, Napoleon Bonaparte making a comeback, trying to reestablish his uh, his uh, galactic empire. <laughs> Commanding uh, First Division on Napoleon's left flank is Marshal Ney. Uh, he's going to have uh, all of these gentlemen. He'll be attacking the built-up area. He'll have the Guard and the Corps Cavalry uh, uh, Brigade under his command. So, uh, here we go, baby. The Prince of Moscow. He's going to see what he can do with this battle. Uh, commanding a uh, second division on Napoleon's right and attacking the uh, the heights is a uh, Marshal Salt. Uh, looking, hopefully, uh, they don't want him attacking the built-up area because they know he'll be tempted to steal everything off the out of the building. So uh, they're they're keeping him uh, concentrated on the taking hills and stuff. So uh, he doesn't give in to his inner inner demons, but he's got the right. Uh, division, the first, second division, uh, which will include the Vistula Legion and the Foreign Brigade, along with the uh, Corps Artillery uh, Brigade. So he'll have all that. Uh, he'll also have the Italians under his command. Commanding first brigade of uh, the French is General Clouseau. Uh, he has four infantry uh, battalions of the uh, 36. Uh, he also has an artillery section. And he's under the command of Marshal Ney. He's on the far left. Second brigade is under uh, General Grenier. Grenier, excuse me. Uh, he's commanding four battalions of the 70th Regiment of Line. He also has an artillery section with attached to him. And uh, he's under the command of Marshal Ney. Third brigade is a monster brigade. Uh, five infantry battalions of the 69th plus a, uh, an artillery battery under the command of uh, General uh, Peugeot, uh, also under the command of Marshal Ney. Fourth Brigade 
is uh, my new guys. I'm excited. Uh, General Houzon is commanding four battalions of the 9th uh, Légère. And, uh, yes, uh, they also have an artillery section with them. And uh, it should be good stuff. Uh, I hope they do well. Uh, but it's, they'll probably fall victim to the uh, the rule when fr freshly painted models get annihilated. But we'll see. Oh, they are under the command of uh, Marshal Sult. A uh, 5th Brigade is uh, under General Brew. He has uh, four line battalions of the 27th, re 27th Regiment of Line. Uh, no artillery. Uh, all these guys have skirmish uh, bases, too, that match their... Uh, I'm not going to get too crazy with the skirmishers. I also don't have enough skirmishers, so some of these guys might get killed and re-show up on a different uh, battalion. So uh, I just couldn't wait anymore. I, I love, you know, I don't mind painting guys, but I'm just, like, ready to play. So I will uh, replenish the ranks of skirmishers in between battles. Uh, General Brew is under the command of Marshal Sult, who's sitting right next to him. Also, here's 6th Brigade uh, under General uh, Mazarny. He has uh, four line battalions of the 105th Regiment of Line and uh, no artillery section with them. 7th Brigade is under uh, General, General Jamin, under the command of Marshal Sult. He has uh, four infantry battalions of the 4th Italian Infantry Regiment. Oh, you gotta love uh, 8th Brigade. Is it 8th get 8th yet? Yeah, it is. General Campy. Uh, three battalions of the Vistula Legion. Uh, first, second, and third of, uh, well, first and second of the first regiment, and, uh, and then first battalion of the uh, second regiment. Plus, they, he has uh, two battalions, the first and second of the 21st Swiss Infantry Battalion. So, uh, that should be rock solid. Uh, and he's also under the command of, uh, Mar he's in Marshal Sult's division. They have an artillery section with them. Ninth Brigade is five guard infantry battalions. Uh, one, or two old guard, one uh, old guard grenadier, one old guard chasseur, a middle guard infantry battalion, and two young guard, one, uh, is it Tuvalier, and then one Voltigeur. And that is under the command of the uh, freshly promoted Mike Desloray, uh, definitely uh, owed the uh, tap to command the uh, the guard just from everything he's done for for me in this channel. So that's a uh, yeah, couldn't think of a uh, a better honor there to say you're in charge of the guard. Uh, Mike will be under the command uh, of Marshal Ney. Uh, he's over there behind those trees. Oh, there he is. Looks like he's trying to hide. Oh, well, I can see, you can see his red head there a little bit. Fifth Brigade will be uh, under G General Emil. He's also under Marshal Sult, just because uh, Sult did such a wonderful job with his cavalry charge. So he has a uh, squadron of cuirassiers, a squadron of uh, oh, carbonniers, a uh, chasseurs à cheval, a, a squadron of grenadiers de cheval, and then a squadron of uh, cheval légers, which is probably the most fun world French words out there, except for like petit déjeuner. I love saying breakfast. Uh, but there they are, five cavalry squadrons of French. Uh, well, you know, two light squadrons and uh, three heavy, and you know, one guard. Uh, the plan is to, uh, of course, add on a more cavalry, uh, probably two Dragoon squadrons at a minimum, and then a uh, a, a Polish uh, Lance or Red Lancer squadron or something like that. I mean, just Guard Lancer squadron, excuse me, which will be very exciting. And then uh, the core artillery uh, section becomes its own uh, brigade, I believe, in these rules. Uh, it's under General Domon with uh, four 12-pound artillery pieces, four sections, basically, of artillery. Not quite the Grand Battery, but at least uh, they'll be under... Uh, Napoleon will give the Sult the tap on that one since uh, Ney's got the uh, cavalry and the, uh, um, and the Imperial Guard. So uh, the artillery will be laying down the law on this elevated terrain here and trying to blow off the Russians and uh, the uh, Highlanders so the French can take the heights. 
All right, that'll wrap up the forces of the Army du Nord. Uh, going over to the Seventh Coalition. Let's uh, go through their order of battle. All right, the overall C and C. You know them, you love them. The Duke of Boots, uh, Lord Wellington. He's on. He's in command. He's ready to kick some booty. He's pointing at people. All right, let's go on. Uh, First Corps commander. I wish I had multiple corps. That was that'd be that'd be sweet. Uh, the Earl of Uxbridge has both of his legs for the moment. Uh, enjoying them, baby. Flex those toes. Enjoy them. <laughs> All right, he is commanding. Uh, the British right, he's over by the built-up area, and uh, he'll be watching out for cannonballs. Uh, commanding 2nd Division with his umbrella over on the uh, the British left, Major General Picton, hoping not to get shot in the head at this one. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty brutal in that movie Waterloo where he's got his hat on in the round, hits him right in the hat, starts bleeding out of his head. Yuck! Um, so he's, uh, he's commanding the, uh, the left and... Uh, he was trying to do some good things. First Brigade uh, defending the built-up area. They're a bunch of beasts. They got the uh, 35th, uh, the 23rd. They're out front. Uh, the 40th and the 3rd. And uh, that is 1st Brigade. They are under the Earl of Uxbridge. Uh, second Brigade also under uh, Uxbridge uh, supporting the uh, built-up area. The town is uh, General Stewart. Oh, uh, General Halkett commanding the 1st Brigade, if I didn't say that. I can't remember if I did. Uh, General Stewart is in charge of 2nd Brigade. He's got the 69th, the 32nd, the 30th, and a Hanoverian Field Battalion from uh, Awesome Brook, the Duke of York's. General Adam, always in the thick of it, every one of these battles. Uh, he's got the King's German Legion, 2nd uh, Battalion and the 5th Battalion, backed up by two Hanoverian Field Bata uh, Battalions from Verdun and Kallenberg. Uh, he does have his artillery piece on the hill, and he is also under the Earl of Uxbridge. 4th Brigade under General Mitchell, uh, got the 1st Royal Scots, the 44th, the 29th, and the fourth, plus an artillery uh, section. And they are under uh, Uxbridge as well. Falling back into Picton's terrain, we've got the 5th Brigade of Johnstones. Uh, 27th, the 88th, the 2nd, and the 28th. Kind of, they've got, they're kind of hanging out behind uh, Wellington. The point of the spear, General Stedman, commanding a mixed... Uh, Brigade of, of uh, coalition forces. Hope he's worked on his Russian. He's got the uh, first battalion of the Moscow Grenadiers, uh, the Tobolsk, the Tobol, Tobolsk. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry, all you Russian people. Uh, Russian Infantry Regiment and the Azov Russian Infantry Regiment, as well as the 45th and the 59th, making a, a five uh, battalion uh, brigade. With tough Russians. Feeling better now that they've got their flags. They were naked last game. Now they're good. They had to get them shipped. 7th Brigade is under Von Steinmetz, our man. He's got uh, two Austrian. He's got, what, he's got a Hanoverian Field Battalion, an Austrian, uh, the 34th Austrian Infantry Regiment, the 28th Prussian Infantry Regiment, and the 34th Austrian uh, Militia. So that's kind of a fun little group. I got some Germans and Austrians and Prussians. Eighth Brigade from up north, baby, the beast of the of the upper of the Highlands. General Pack got the uh, Gordon Highlanders, the Black Watch, the Argyleshire Highlanders, and the Cameron Highlanders. Uh, plus an artillery section up there on the hill. He's uh, he's feeling it. They are of course under General Picton. They're loving him. All right. Uh, next up is our boy, General Doug Carmichael, commanding the Guard. Uh, two battalions of the 1st Guards, one battalion of the Coldstream Guards, and one battalion of the Scots Guards. Also under the command of uh, Picton. Uh, going over to the 10th Brigade, that's the Cavalry Brigade. We're going back to Uxbridge, and she was the Corps Cavalry Commander at Waterloo. He's got the 1st uh, Lifeguards, 1st Royal Horse Guards, 2nd Dragoons, 7th Queen's Own, 7th Queen's Own Hussars, 
and the first Royal Dragoons, and I'm sorry for my pronunciation and my camera work. And the uh, the grand battery for the British uh, is uh, four artillery sections of their General Hawker reporting to uh, General Picton. And that's the end of the uh, coalition forces. Looking forward to adding some more color to these guys. It's kind of great seeing the, uh, the Russian flags and the Austrian and the, and the Prussian. We'll get more and more of those as time goes by. I think next up will be, I've still got two more, maybe three more British uh, battalions to add on. And I've already got flags from GMB, so I'm always exciting to see the British stuff out here. And, uh, yeah, it's time to uh, see how good these brigade commanders are. And we'll go from there. And there is the uh, British caisson near uh, Wellington. And they've got... Uh, of course, two markers for each uh, division and the one extra one from the Corps Commander. All right, you'll have to forgive me. I made a command decision or executive decision. Um, my intro was getting a bit too long, so I just kind of powered out rolling out the brigade commanders and the divisional commanders in my uh, at work using a dice app. Uh, we had the French ended up with two bold commanders, uh, both. Uh, both sides, uh, divisional commanders are, I think, campaigners is what it's called. And then, of course, uh, Napoleon and Wellington are off the charts. Uh, so we'll get a core adjutant for both sides. And then the French have, uh, of course, the two bold commanders. Uh, and then each divisional commander has two C&C orders they can drop. I did forget to mention for the Allied forces that General Carmichael is also a bold brigade commander. So, yeah, just trying to get used to it all. So I, got, I think I've got everything mentioned here. And uh, I've labeled all the troops. Uh, every unit is classed uh, according to the General Day Armée 2 system. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Took a little bit of housekeeping, but I think we're good. I've got that little... Uh, dice on all of the divisional commanders to show that they are uh, uh, they have their two C and C orders okay uh, I'm going to do each division by itself for the number of ADCs because I want to roll 17,000 dice at once so I've marked all of Ney's uh, five brigades and I'm going to roll a corresponding dice and we'll just uh, go from there All right, Ney hits a home run. All of his uh, ADCs are uh, locked in. Let's go on to Salt. Salt's uh, brain is still suffering from the Peninsular War. Uh, <laughs> he only has uh, three ADCs. All right, sorry about the paint on my hands. Here are the uh, core uh, orders. And we do have a, uh, a core adjutant because Napoleon is just Napoleon. And uh, he'll get, if he gets a one, he'll be able to re-roll one of these. Napoleon misses the uh, blue dice uh, with a two, so he won't be riding the line this time. He has uh, got the rest of them now. And I really think I should have rolled this first now, read on these rolls. So there's, a, there's my first screw-up. Uh, core orders should go first because he can add ADCs and stop hesitant stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. All right, uh, Napoleon is going to use, uh, he can't ride the line, which is, you know, it's okay, no big deal. He is going to hold the spy uh, dice in his hand in case one of the British divisions or Al our 7th Coalition uh, divisions hit a home run and make them re-roll everything. He's going to issue a forwards... Uh, Oh, sorry. A forwards tasking to uh, 5th Brigade under uh, General Brew and have them uh, move forward as well. And I'll just say I basically dropped the ball for the uh, <laughs> for the actual a extra ADC um, since they are all active. All right, let's go over to Wellington. Going to do it right this time, hopefully, and uh, do the uh, core orders first. I'll definitely have to roll both of these first because of the spy uh, option. But thankfully, he screwed up his headquarters order, but he's got everything else. Picton at six ADCs. Let's see what he can do. He 
He only gets three. He's batting 50%. Kind of must be some kind of struggle over here in uh, on the uh, this side of the battlefield. All right, Earl of Uxbridge rolling for 580C availability. All right, he has four ADCs. Okay, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, First Brigade Clouseau. He's going to get a forwards tasking with a 180C because they had f uh, five. That'll cast actually two. Uh, did not have a reroll there. Uh, and then um, Grenier, he's also going to get a forwards tasking, and he has a brigade attachment for the reroll. Um, the rest of their, uh, and that's all 580C, so that burns it up quick. I definitely see what uh, David Brown was talking about. You can't do everything you want to do at once. Um, and I, he did good. Uh, poor uh, Salt has only got like two or three ADC, so he's going to, you know, he'll definitely, he's got the artillery, so he's probably going to do an arterial, arterial assault. We'll get to that later, but that's the end of your ADCs. I got no double sixes on this. Um, all of the brigade commanders under Ney have been marked, uh, and then... Desleray Ray back here is gets a, a black and a white dice. Being a bold commander, you roll two and you take the highest dice. And that's awesome. The only uh, one I rolled was uh, only one or two I rolled. Excuse me, was one of them was the low dice for uh, a bold brigade com a brigade commander. So the French are all active, uh, and they also they got all their tasking. So that's. Uh, we're going to have a lurch forward here on the left. Marshal Salt is going to uh, put artillery assault on uh, the core artillery brigade and a re brigade attachment. That's all three of his ADCs. Uh, General Campy uh, is the other bold brigade commander for the Armée du Nord, and uh, he'll get a, the double dice action going on. All right, let's see what uh, Salt Six Brigades can do. Salt is able to do the exact same thing. All of his uh, brigades are active. The only two he got was on his low dice for his bold commander. So, yay. Uh, everything's active. All right, so Ma uh, Major General Picton only had three ADCs, so he's put Artillery Assault on uh, the Core Artillery Brigade with a Brigade Reroll. The Earl of Uxbridge has a four ADCs, and let me figure out where I'm going to put all these. Uxbridge put uh, four ADCs, or just brigade attachments, on four of his uh, brigades, and then uh, the fifth brigade actually, uh, Wellington has lent him an extra ADC, so he's got to reroll on every single one of his brigades. We'll see how active they are. Carmichael is a bold brigadier, so he'll take the best of those two dice. All right, let's do uh, Major General Picton first, see if he's active or not. All the uh, brigades have been marked. So uh, Von Steinmetz is the only one to go hesitant there. Oh, too bad. Earl of Uxbridge only has uh, five brigades. Let's see how he's active. He's got rerolls for every single brigade. General Adam is going to use his reroll with the King's German Legion Commander. And so will General Mitchell in charge of uh, 4th Brigade. Okay, um, uh, we'll do initiative now. Uh, each force will roll a uh, 2d6. We don't have to add any extra dice on because on a core level game, uh, for core initiative... If one of the divisions has two hesitant, faltering, or dispersed uh, brigades within that division, it adds dice on. Uh, but we only have uh, one hesitant brigade per division, so that does not. Uh, there is no addition for these dice. We're just going to roll two d six. Yeah, I thought I was going to have to have Wellington ride the line, but once I saw that was. Uh, uh, it had to be two hesitant brigades within a division to cause an initiative problem. Plus, it's turn one. You're like, eh, is it? I think also if the attacking force, which would be the French here, uh, 
they get like an automatic rule if one of their if they had a brigade that was hesitant on turn one it would automatically pass so uh, they didn't need that rule but uh yeah so there we go command and control and initiative done uh was a bit of a struggle um thankfully with the uh amazingness of editing i hope you guys hopefully won't notice too much of the problems i had it really took a minute for me just to remember everything it was probably comp it's compounded by my first game and by playing a massive core level game on my first game not too smart but uh yeah if you're gonna learn it you might as well learn it right that's the way i think so the french will be the phasing uh with uh army for this turn uh and we'll go on to the movement phase there will be well, there'll be no charges no one's in range of charging all right, first movement will be the French. Will be a first brigade under General Clouseau. He will move forward. Uh, column advances at nine inches in 28 millimeter, and he'll add a 2d6 for the forwards tasking. Clouseau surges forward 16 inches. Uh, he's immediately in the uh, British uh, faces. So he. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool with the forwards order. I like it. Cool. All right, let's deal with the next second brigade. Grenier's second brigade also has a forward tasking, so they're going to lurch forward as well. They also surge forward 16 inches, uh, making their artillery completely useless. Um, I guess I wasn't expecting that one. All right, another first tactical screw up. There will be more. All right, let's go on to third brigade. They also surge forward 16 inches, uh, making their artillery completely useless. Um, I guess I wasn't expecting that one. All right, another first tactical screw up. There will be more. All right, let's go on to 3rd Brigade. Oh, no, I lied. We're going to go on to uh, 9th Brigade. Uh, uh, General uh, Desleré going to move forward with the guard 9 inches. Definitely uh, strange moving the Imperial Guard on the first turn, but they're, they're keeping pace. Uh, Marshal Ney moved up with them. If these guys, I'm just thinking in my head, if these guys have problems or have to fall back, they'll need a unit to fall back onto uh, so they can rally behind them. And that'll be the, the guard on this flank, it looks like. And I am kicking myself for not doing the skirmish tasking, but that's just a rookie mistake uh, for the for both sides, really. Uh, the franchise wanted to be aggressive. I think I got in my head, I, over, especially at Earl, over here on the Earl of Uxbridge, I wanted to uh, not be hesitant because I thought it would affect uh, initiative more, but I definitely should have uh, been throwing some of those skirmish taskings in too, just, especially with the 95th and the 60th Royal American, uh, taking advantage of those British uh, guns and rifles. 3rd Brigade uh, under Peugeot will move forward 9 inches. General uh, Peugeot's advance does amazingly well, just moving forward into that gap. Actually left room for his artillery piece to fire. General Emil is going to stay in place with the cavalry brigade and uh, just look for an opportunity, but it's not yet to uh, start advancing. General uh, Houzon orders 4th Brigade forward as the 9th Legere moves forward 9 inches towards the, uh, the Russians and the British in front of them. Yeah, baby, first battle, going in hot. General Brew in 5th Brigade, he's got a forwards tasking for his four battalions of the 27th. Let's see how far uh, extra he gets. He only gets a 13-inch uh, move, but he's close enough to drive back the uh, Russian and British skirmishers. Uh, put And his own skirmishers also fall back behind his uh, massed columns as they close in on the 1st Russian Brigade. 6th Brigade under General Mazarni is just going to move forward 9 inches to uh, support this push by his uh, sister brigade. They move forward to keep uh, keep in contact with their brigade in front of them. Marshal Salt also moving forward, urging his men into aggression, following Napoleon's plan of uh, all-out attack. The Italians under General Jamin will move forward 9 inches. Italians move forward. Thankfully, uh, with the Highland Brigades and everything else elevated, the uh, core artillery battery will still be able to fire. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Elevated versus elevated. Uh, and then finally, the uh, Foreign Legion with the uh, Vistula Legion and the Swiss will also advance nine inches. 
Seventh Coalition forces are going to remain static. They're not going to move. Just kind of do a quick slow pan across the battlefield. I'll try to uh, not go like a crazy person like usual. As you see, the uh, Army du Nord moving forward like a beast. Still got some ground to cover here in the center. Uh, probably for the saving the cavalry for. Even the old guard is uh, not used to walking so early in a battle as they move forward too. Almost uh, black powder-like movements here with the three forwards orders. I'd uh, hate to see when I do a forwards order on the cavalry. That's going to be absolutely insane. Okay. That'll be movement done. I think skirmish firing is next. That's insane. I love it. French pushing in on the Russians. Get some good hand-to-hand -hand there at some point. But they're gonna do some close range uh, musketry fire first. Russians aren't quite known for that, but the French are in attack column. Oh yeah. Okay, see you in a second. Sorry, I started drooling a little bit. Hey guys, uh, gonna start skirmish fire here in a second over on the, uh, with 1st Brigade, the French. Um, their skirmishers will fire first. A quick apology, I w went back and watched uh, uh, Check Your Leader's uh, boot camp for GDA2 and I have no idea where I came up with those whacked out rules I was using for uh, uh, bold brigade commanders. Um, they get like an automatic reroll as long as you don't give them more than, is it two? Maybe one or two. Oh, hang on, let me make sure before I even tell you guys wrong. They get an automatic reroll as long as they're not you're not using more than one. So you can use none or one tasking and they are they can do a free reroll. Otherwise they just, they would act like a normal standard brigade brigadier. The pours I need I don't have any in this battle. Uh I'll play with them later. Obviously I need to get some more foundation down. <laughs> I'm not ready for that yet. So uh, definitely have to work my way up to that. So uh, uh, I haven't even read those yet, but we'll we'll do something. Uh, we'll look into that later. All right, so we'll start off with skirmish fire here down with 1st Brigade. All right, the uh, skirmish screen for 1st Battalion of the French is going to fire at the uh, British skirmishers screening their 1st uh, Brigade. Uh, they will get, it's, it's fire, the number of dice they get to, to shoot, which are called skirmish dice. You get one dice plus the number of bases you have. So they have four bases, and so they'll get five dice. And uh, every two hits will cause a casualty. And a skirmish base can take three casualties before it's removed. And half casualties are nothing. They end up doing one casualty on that uh, skirmish screen. So there you go, not too hard, uh, went well. Now we'll go ahead and go down to the next one, second brigade, same thing, five shots of the same skirmish screen. They get three hits, which goes back down to just one hit. So it gets every two, or one casualty, excuse me. Uh, so they, it's every Two hits causes one casualty, and every half casualty does nothing. All right, so they rock them for that. We'll continue on down the uh, French line. Skirmish range is 12 inches and 28 millimeter. So these guys are short. No shooting for you. Sorry about that, boss. Here's a fun one. Uh, this screen it isn't out there for this brigade for the British, so the Leger skirmish is screen will be firing at a line battalion of the British. I think it's the Sherwood Forest guys. They do one casualty on the 45th. That's pretty cool. All right, now we'll move over. These guys don't have skirmishers. Well, they do, but they are. There wasn't enough room to deploy. And I think the Italians might be in range down here. The Italian, uh, Skirmishers are in range of the uh, Highland Battalion's uh, 95th or 60th, whatever it is. They're, they're, they're skirmishers. They're going to fire five dice at them. Well, great shooting as they pop two casualties into that screen. The skirmishers of the uh, Vistula Legion and the Swiss is too far away from the uh, British line. 
That ends the French skirmish screen. We'll go on to our skirmish firing. Go on to the uh, British now. Yes, they will get six dice as they shoot back at the French. They pop two casualties on them. Oh, that'll do it. All right, going down to uh, the King's German Legion. Uh, their skirmish screen will fire at 2nd Brigade skirmish line. Really wish I had the skirmish tasking going. That would have been all kinds of, uh, what's it called, disorder checks? When you, uh, yeah. If you, if you get double sixes with the skirmish tasking, it causes that check they have to do. Uh, but they do two more casualties to this one, or just they do two to the 2nd Battalion's uh, skirmish screen, 2nd Brigade's. Uh, the Highland Battalion, 8th Brigade, uh, sorry, the Highland Brigade, uh, their skirmishers fire at the Italians that are coming out on with six dice. And they cause one skirmish, uh, sorry, one casualty. All right, that's the end of skirmish fire for both sides. Got some cotton out there. We're looking good. Oh, beautiful. Let's go on to uh, artillery is next. French artillery, then uh, coalition forces. First Brigade's 8-pounder firing a counter battery against the uh, first brigade of the uh, coalition's uh, battery. At effective range, I believe. It's an uh, under 24 inches. Yeah, that's uh, effective range. No modifiers, so just standard uh, barrage with no extra dice. Those boys get nailed for two casualties and a discipline check. Oh, well, Royal, uh, Royal Artillery are considered elite by me, at least, because my great grandfather was in the uh, Royal Horse Artillery. So <laughs> French will get bigger guns and uh, the. The British just have better gunners, so that's probably traditionally correct, or historically correct, excuse me. Uh, they'll need a 5-plus to uh, pass a discipline check. Well, they cut it close, but they pass. This gun was placed by a moron and can't fire. 3rd Brigade's gun uh, will fire at, will do counter-battery fire against the... Uh, Royal Artillery gun up there on the edge. Long range. This will be a shot on the inferior fire table. No effect at all on the uh, British gun, or battery I should say. This gun was also placed by a genius. Uh, firing is uh, not an option really on that one. This French 8-pounder is going to fire at the uh, British battery up there is encounter battery fire but it's long range so it'll be inferior fire but there will be bounce through they do one casualty on 8th brigade's uh, battery and we get bounce through into the guard that ball whizzes by those guys heads they don't even flinch they're super strong the french grand battery these guys are going to be elite guns large battery they're going to fire at one of the Highland uh, battalions. Domon is going to unload with his 12-pounders uh, on the Black Watch. Try to soften them up before the uh, Italians get there. This is assault fire, so they're going to get two, com uh, two extra CD. and uh, But they're going to fire on the inferior fire table because they're about four inches into long range on 12-pounders. Domon is going to adjust their uh, aiming pattern there, whatever, the, <laughs> the range, crank up on the wheels a little bit. They, uh, they hit nothing. Everything bricks. First Brigade Six Pounders return fire uh, counter battery style against the French guns that damage them. Uh, at effective range, here we go. I put a casualty on that uh, French battery. Uh, 3rd Brigade 6-pounder counter-battery fire at long range. They inflict a casualty on that French 8-pound battery. Double trouble! The other uh, British 6-pounder uh, fires at long range with that same battery. No effect on that long range blast. Yeah, those things go out to 65 inches, so that's uh, 33 inches to this uh, 
group down here. Uh, long range, but there is a skirmish scream. The 4th Battalion of the 69th takes a casualty, and uh, the skirmish screen takes one as well. I think the check has got to be on the line battalion. I'm going to double check real quick. So it looks like when firing shot, the artillery can target the skirmish line or the line battalion. They're going to go ahead and target the line battalion, and they'll take two shots plus the discipline check. Oh crap, those guys get hammered. They retreat. Plus four CDs of uh, casualties. 4th Battalion, 69th, falls back next to the Emperor. <laughs> they retreat that far. Woo! Here we go. British guns having an effect. Final shooting, we have a, a counter-battery fire by the uh, Highland Brigade's uh, six-pound battery at long range against those uh, the French eight-pounders. They inflict one casualty on 8th Brigade's 8-pound battery. For close-range musketry fire, <laughs> we've got the uh, four battalions of the 27th and attack, attack uh, columns firing at that Russian uh, line battalion, and also uh, British 45th firing into the skirmish line. I'm going to roll the French all at once with four different pairs of colored dice. Uh, they're going to be inferior volleys against the Russians. First Russian column uh, on the far side there, 1st Battalion, takes a fire discipline. Uh, the Azov Battalion takes four casualties and a discipline check. And uh, we'll roll that up. Oh, I like it. Not too bad from uh, attack columns. All right. These guys failed this discipline check. I don't know where the heck they're going to go. They're going to have to fall back to... <laughs> through like a mile and a half of guys. Oh no, four casualties and they go unformed. That's gonna be fun. They gotta fire back now. Well, I do owe the Azov Battalion a, an apology. I'm um, gonna take away their unformed. Uh, I read the rules wrong. Infantry in column firing uh, should have only had the the really terrible volley, the weak volley where they fire one dice each. So, yeah, I'm gonna actually roll. Nah, I'll just take away their uh, their unformed because that was they wouldn't have had a discipline check. I'm also just gonna give them two casualties instead of four. That's fair. All right, now they're gonna fire back with a massive volley. Uh, they'll pick the uh, second battalion there and hit them right in the center of the screen. Well, that sucks. They get fire discipline. Going over to the 45th, they're going to fire at skirmishers. Oh, they hammer the skirmishers, and that goes on to destiny roll, too. Awesome. Discipline check on that skirmish line. They take two casualties, uh, sorry, another casualty, so they lose a skirmish base and go unformed. Now for the destiny roll for the 45th for that double six. They recover a casualty and they can take a free move if they want to, but they're not going to. They just go back to no casualties. All right, we survived turn one. Bit of a struggle. Uh, definitely made it tough on myself with well, all the screw ups I made in the uh, uh, the command and control, the beginning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, learning. Caught a couple mistakes. That's good. I keep going back in between taking little breaks and going back and watching uh, uh, the Two Fat Lardies video and the Check Your Leader TV boot camp just for references and also, of course, tons of reading the rule book. But, uh, yeah, we're blasting away. We're having a good time here. Should have some hand-to-hand -hand here quickly, which I like. As the uh, French try to slam into the uh, main part of the British force. Okay. Cool. All right, we'll get uh, turn two started here, and we know we're going to start it with the core orders, so uh, at least we'll get that right. All right, we'll see you in a minute, guys. We're going to start off with Napoleon's core orders, then we'll follow with that with Wellington's. Trying to stick to the right rules. 
Napoleon's core, uh, core adjutant coming through on that one. He might still be doing some drinking. He's still back in the tent. Didn't quite make it to the battlefield to correct that one. Let's see how Wellington does over here. He's already talking to his core adjutant. It's like, get your act together, man. Let's see if that pep talk pays off with that black die. All right, Wellington has all four and Napoleon's missing the blue die. I think that's ride the line. I can't remember. All right, we're gonna roll all 11 ADCs for the French at the same time. I've got their uh, color coded by division. Hopefully this works. This should speed things up a little bit. Oh, Salt comes with all six. Nay got five, four out of five. Well, the French aren't doing horribly. Let's go over to the uh, coalition side and do the same thing. Picton gets uh, four and uh, Earl of Uxbridge ended up getting all of his with five so not too bad uh, could have been a whole lot worse all right let's keep on being methodical about this as we try not to screw up turn two command phase starting on the French left uh, Ney is going to order Clouseau and Grenier with a uh, Infantry Assault and a reroll. I actually, I actually thought that was two ADCs for Infantry Assault, so I'm kind of psyched this one. Um, Napoleon might throw in more here. Uh, he's allowed, to, I think he's allowed to donate an ADC, but that's what we got going right now. Over here with Salt, we have an Infantry Assault against the Russians. Uh, with Glory and a Brigade reroll. Very nice. And then for the Italian Stallions, they've got a Infantry Assault plus a Forwards Tasking to try to reach the Highland Brigade. Napoleon is going to use his red dice to add an ADC to Ney, who will add, will give that to Clouseau, and he will add on Glory for his another an additional tasking to 1st uh, Brigade. Napoleon is also going to give his black dice to Peugeot for an additional Forwards Tasking for uh his brigade as they advance, well, they have the longest advance towards the British lines. The Earl of Uxbridge puts a uh, brigade reroll on a General uh, Hawkett holding the built up area. This doesn't want these guys going uh, hesitant with the French bearing down on them. And we're going all in on uh, General Adam with the King's German Legion. A skirmish tasking, a forwards tasking, and a brigade reroll. The whole Shabil Shabangi Bang. Picton goes all in with his artillery, his grand battery, with a uh, artillery assault and a reroll. And also, uh, General Stedman with the Russians gives him a glory. Do he uh, try to hold off the French as they come on in? Wellington's going to give his uh, red and his black dice to uh, General Possumby to forwards and also a brigade reroll. I think we did pretty good there. No screw ups, as I can tell, far as I can tell. Uh, both uh, Corps commanders are holding their uh, spy probably token back, and Wellington's got ride the line if this whole thing goes hesitant. Let's check brigade status as we chug along. I got all of Ney's uh, five brigades marked with day, and we're going to uh, go ahead and roll those and see what happens. All right. One of those was uh, Mike Desloray, but he is a bold brigadier, so he will get to re-roll his immediately because he has zero brigade orders. <laughs> Alright, so we get infantry assault and glory over here with Clouseau. Uh, Grenier goes in with infantry assault, and then it kind of goes downhill from there. Uh, Mike D stuck with the guard, and also... Uh, uh, General Peugeot with the also with their treating unit they, He's stuck in that status and he will be sitting there hesitant out in the middle of the battlefield Wellington is definitely not using his spy on that disaster consult rolling his uh, six uh, Brigades see what they do So gets them all except for this bold uh, brigadier 
uh, that would get is going to get to re-roll that anyway. But uh, there's going to be some intervening from a British spy who was over in the corner drinking tea. Wellington gives the nod to his spy that's hanging out in Napoleon's uh, tent. Knocks over some stuff on the map. They're going to re-roll all those things. Salt is totally confused. Oh, great uh, great use of the spy. They get three hesitant uh, rolls on that one. Uh, Domon has no re-roll, so he's instantly... The French artillery uh, is going to go silent. I don't think they can fire at long range, so they're going to cool off. General Campy is a bold brigadier with the uh, Vistula Legion and the Swiss, so he gets an automatic... Uh, Reroll at his failure. General Brew with 5th Brigade was the other uh, victim. He is going to, he has a reroll already, so he's going to try that. Ney has two hesitant uh, brigades, while Solt only has one. It's his uh, artillery, his core brigade. Uh, nothing crucial yet. Too early for uh, C and C commands, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Let's go over to the Seventh Coalition. See how their brigades do. All right, Picton's got six brigades. Let's see how they fare. Here comes. They're feeling pressure all across the line. Oh, horrible rolling. Ney's, uh, sorry, not Ney. A Napoleon spy over there by Picton just kind of slinks away and hides behind his gin closet. Not going to attack. Not going to intervene with that disaster. Must have said it kind of quietly. Only Von Steinmetz and uh, Hawker are the only ones who passed that first wave of checks. Uh, let's see if any... Who's got re-rolls? I know Doug does. General Pack immediately goes uh, hesitant with the Highland Brigade over on the British left. General Johnstone does the same as a, kind of a reserve battalion back here on the... Or brigade on the right. Or in the center, excuse me. General Carmichael, being a bold brig brigadier, will automatically re-roll his failure. General Carmichael cannot spell failure. The guard. No hesitancy here. General Stedman has a re-roll with his glory. He's leading the Russians and the uh, English frontline uh, brigade. Picton only ends up with uh, two hesitant brigades himself. Not Wellington's still has that blue ride the line, but he's going to hold that to see how uh, well the Earl of Uxbridge does. Let's check on his brigade status, or his uh, brigade's status. He's really interested in uh, General Adam. He's yelling at him. He's right in front of him. All but one on his initial roll. Napoleon's spy jumps out of those trees and freaking knocks over uh, <laughs> the Uxbridge, uh, Earl of Uxbridge's leg. <laughs> or his horse, sorry. He's trying to gnaw on his leg. All right, let's make that, re make that a re-roll. It's only General uh, is it Stewart, yeah, with the uh, brigade behind the built-up areas goes hesitant. Everything else is going to happen. We're going to get Glory up here in the front for 1st Brigade. The, uh, I'm sorry, the Hanoverian, sorry, the King's German Legion uh, Brigade with the Hanoverians is going to go nuts. They got skirmishers, uh, forwards. I think that's it. I don't even know. Yeah, they had a reroll too. And then uh, General Possumby's cavalry will also have a forwards uh, tasking. Wellington's not going to pull the trigger on his ride the line for his last corps order. Um, only has two brigades hesitant on his left, one on his right. Uh, French are about the same boat. Uh, if you use ride the line, you're not available next turn. So he's uh, going to save it. All right, that ends the command phase. Oh, I can do initiative. Um, but that went a lot, a lot smoother. The first one was, uh, I'm, I'm glad you missed 90% of it with me, uh, with some good editing. But uh, well, that was a struggle. I was all over the place and got about everything wrong. It's, uh, and that wasn't uh, a fault of the rules. That's just my brain and uh, probably the size of this battle and inexperience. So feeling a lot better now with... Uh, you know, just by turn two. So don't hold that against the rule set. I think it's, uh, that was completely me. Um, both brigades, sorry, both armies have two uh, hesitant um, 
brigades in one division. So they'll both be rolling 3d6 uh, for initiative, taking the lowest two dice. Napoleon keeps the initiative. The French will be the phasing player. Oh, turn two. It's going good for the Emperor. He's not rusty at all in 1815 so far. Probably get a... He's going to pass out at some point from that poison that didn't work in, in uh, Russia. And uh, they will take the command and go crazy. All right, charge phase. Oh, yeah, it's happening. Uh, Clouseau going in against the... Uh, I think it's the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. Grenier will go in against the 35th with Infantry Assault. Uh, Clouseau also has uh, Glory. General Brew has uh, Infantry Assault and Glory. He'll go in against the Azov uh, Battalion. General Jamin is going to try to reach the Highland uh, Brigade. See if he can. He's got a forwards tasking and an infantry assault. Seventh Coalition has no charges to declare. Okay. Here we go. We'll start on the left and work our way to the right. All right. The French 1st and 2nd Brigades go in fully supported. And they've kind of halted at the uh, first at the touchdown marker here. <laughs> a little bit short as the uh, 23rd and the 35th open up with their closing fire. And then we'll uh, push in for the charge after that, if if it even happens. They could break apart. 3rd Battalion, 27th, is already kind of almost in contact with the Russians. They were just short last turn. So uh, they will just halt there. They'll be leading the charge with just two supports. And, uh, yeah, we'll do the Russian closing fire. The big one is how far will the uh, Italians get? They've got a uh, infantry assault and a forward, so they get a 2d6 bonus to this. Let's see how close they can get to the uh, plus 9 inches. <laughs> Italians surge forward 20 inches, slamming into the Black Watch. Uh, wow, they brought the Italian track team with them. These boys are quick. They covered a lot of distance. The uh, got some jealousy back here by the uh, Vistia Legion. They ate too much sausage and kielbasa last night. They can't go that fast. A little bit of heartburn. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got some closing fire, and then we got the charge resolution. And I got to figure out who's going to support, who's not going to support. Oh, my gosh. I need, some, I need some Pepto. Let's go. All right, let's work our way through this nightmare. Uh, the French are going to have three supports plus glory. The... Royal Wells Fusiliers, um, they can't be supported by the artillery unit. Um, the artillery unit could have fired as they came in, but they were kind of would have been blasting off the far right of the uh, Fusiliers uh, line. But so I said no on that one. So they'll have to shoot later on. <clears throat> uh, the Royal Welsh will be supported by the unit in the built up area behind them, which is in range. Uh, these units cannot support, one, they're too far away, and two, they're also in their own disaster, which is going to happen next. Now, we'll do the closing fire uh, by the uh, the British, or the Welsh, excuse me, and then we'll uh, proceed to some dice rolling. They just inflict one casualty on the 3rd uh, Battalion of a 36 as they close in. All right, bit of a crack shoot here, or crap shoot, excuse me. Um, we've got just both are going to roll 2d6 because they're equal in grade, and the French will have available three re-rolls, and the British will have one. All right, right now the French are losing by one. They're going to re-roll one of their threes. That didn't help. They're going to re-roll that one. This is turning into a nightmare. Uh, they got one chance left to beat a two. Oh, that was pathetic. <laughs> they end up with a draw. Uh, British, I mean, the way I was rolling there, I'm not going to take a chance of doing a reroll. Uh, close to combat, and they're going to fight it out in the melee phase at the end of the uh, turn. One over to the next hand to hand. 35th, going to unload as the French come in. <laughs> 
They inflict one casualty on the second battalion of the seventh, seventieth as they close in. Uh, French will have three supports. Then once again, the but the thirty fifth will only have one. Here we go again. A seven versus a six. Uh, French are going to start their reroll process. French have they're up by one. British only have one reroll. Oh. What do you do? I'm just, I'm going to stick. I'm going to take combat with Elan for the French. The British can't take a chance of going into some kind of victory and getting wiped off the map. All right, the Azov Battalion firing at 3rd Battalion, uh, 27th as they close in. French only have two supports in this one. And that's the result you want. You want to inflict at least three casualties. And, you know, obviously a discipline check if you can. Uh, they're able to pop them for three as they close in. That will have effect on the charge. Holy cow, the Russians go beast mode. They're jacked up on juice. We're going to get someone to check them for uh, steroids. <laughs> they roll huge with a double six, which will, I think triggers a what's it called? It? A uh, destiny roll as well. The uh, two lowest dice were a five and a one. Um, definitely going to re-roll a one so they don't get obliterated here on the charge all right French have got it got one more reroll right now they're getting beat back they gotta try to beat a three no matter what all right the Russians whack them uh, French will get to do one CD volley because they're gonna halt and volley just short of the Russians uh, they are unformed that lead unit so they took three casualties they're unformed they're gonna roll one die here and we still have a destiny check for the Russians. If that was a British uh, battalion, they could have charged to contact and reversed the uh, reversed the tide on those gentlemen. The Azov uh, battalion is up to three casualties now. Let's do their destiny roll. The Russians are fired up and immediately recover that casualty they just they just got inflicted on. They're back down to three. Oh, they're so tough. Italians going in crazy style against the Highland Brigade. Uh, Italians are lying. The Highlanders are grenadier. So there'll be a different difference there. No glory for the uh, Italians. So uh, I think there'll, there'll definitely be an advantage here for the, uh, the Scots. We'll do closing fire on the lead uh, battalion of the... Italians get hammered for three casualties on the way in. All right, uh, so they suffer three casualties. They'll be rolling three dice. Uh, they're fully supported, so they'll get three rerolls. The Scots have two supports, plus they're a grade higher, so they'll get three roll three rerolls themselves. All right, now, right now the Scottish have uh, an eight, and the Italians have a six, so. Italians are going to start the re-rolls. First one does nothing. Losing by one is not exciting. They got to go for it. All right, right now the Italians are winning by one. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Scottish have uh, three chances to beat a three. First one's a bust. Pack screaming at these guys, trying to get them fired up. And that'll do it. They stop them cold. Oh, halt and fire. Uh, they'll do one die against the uh, Highland Brigade. Black Watch suffers one casualty as they inflict three on the Italians. So they try to close in. Very nice. The uh, Pictons. Uh, brigades hold out strong against the uh, French assault and Italian. Going on to movement, Ney's basically paralyzed. Um, the cavalry could move forward. They're going to move forward just a little bit into this gap. Just try to decrease the inches when they have to rush out here at some point. But they're kind of uh, landlocked with uh, being surrounded by these brigades. French cavalry begins to move forward at the trot. Uh, the Leger will also move forward 
Just getting ready for the next uh, turn where hopefully they'll get the charge. Luzon moves forward the uh, ninth Leger, uh, recalls his three remaining skirmishers to the rear and re uh, reforms them too. They were unformed from a failed discipline check. And they are closing in on the uh, the British setting themselves up for next term. They gotta survive a volley though. Napoleon's allies move up the uh, right side of the uh, of their flank, heading towards the uh, Highland Brigades. <laughs> oh no! Good luck, gentlemen. All right, so that's the end of the French movement. Uh, let's get into the uh, British movement. All right, first up, Adams' brigade's got a forwards tasking and a skirmish tasking. All right, with the move pulled out of the uh, Peninsula Wars, the King's German Legion and their Hanoverian uh, field battalions pull off a massive wheel and are set themselves up to start attacking this French attack columns in the flank. Oh, I can't remember if you can shoot guys that just took part in hand or taking part in hand to hand. I'll have to look that up. But there, if it is, the skirmish tasking will happen. If it isn't, I don't know what to do. Um, I'll figure that out. But if uh, the 35th is able to hold out. These guys will be in a great position to uh, attack next turn. And with the path cleared in front of them, the Lord Possenby will order his uh, troops, his cavalry, forward out onto the uh, plains of uh, Ath. Oh, here they come. British heavy, heavy cavalry charge. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are like, what? Well, at least they got an artillery piece there to hammer away. Holy smokes. That's what you want to see. That's insane. French cavalry's got to get their act together and get out there and stop this from happening. All right, Possumby. He means business. All right, as movement ends for turn two. Just getting a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs up in here. Oh, especially right there. That's insane. Great move by General Adam. Taking the flank there. Built up area. Feeling supported. Mike DeSlaray. Concerned that he failed. As a, he's hesitant this turn. Doesn't like it. And uh, General Carmichael back there with the British Guard. Hasn't even been looked at for an order yet. He's just like, whatever. I'll deal with it later. But a lot of pressure on the built-up area, but uh, there is help on the way. These guys, I don't know. Well, there's help on the way. They just got to get their act together. French cavalry at the trot. They need to accelerate. All right, I got to do some can skirmishers fire into units taking part in hand-to-hand. -hand. I don't know. It sounds like a no, but we'll see. Starting off from shooting left to right, this uh, French 8-pounder is going to fire at effective range at that British gun. That British battery is pounded up to three casualties now. All right, going further down the line. Unfortunately for the King's German Legion and uh, their skirmishers, they, yes, they have outflanked uh, the, uh, the French there attacking. They'll be able to shoot in a minute, but they have walked right in front of a cannon. So I gotta check the range. This could be a canister shot into the flank of that uh, King Sherman Legion battalion. Yes, it is 11 inches, so that's inside of uh, 12 is the canister range for an eight pounder. Uh, whoa, what a shot! A battalion of the King's German Legion gets absolutely walloped. Four casualties plus a discipline check. Thankfully, they are a Grenadier Battalion, so they passed that discipline check. Well, you know what? I should have fired skirmishers first. Oh! All right, we'll keep that the way it is. It doesn't really affect any skirmishers with the artillery piece. Uh, my fault. Got all comfortable. Got all excited about shooting. Uh, first uh, French skirmishers of uh, 3rd Brigade firing at the uh, the Blues as they close in. To tell you the truth, I don't even think skirmishers can fire at cavalry. They can shoot, but they lose one die for firing at the uh, cavalry. 
They're obviously terrified because they don't even get even close. Skirmishers in front of the Vista Legion, the Swiss fire at the uh, Cameron Highlanders. They pop two casualties on the Highlanders. Nice stuff. That's the end of the French uh, skirmishers. Not really much of a, not much going on there. Going over to the uh, King's German Legion, way the heck over there. Uh, they can't fire at units in combat, so they're going to go ahead and fire at the uh, Fourth Battalion of the which unit is that? The Seventieth with uh, six dice. Put two casualties on those gentlemen. Oh, nice. Uh, we pan to the right. I think we have these skirmishers right here. We're gonna fire at these skirmishers. I'm gonna check the range. Oh, it's 13 inches. They are out of range. Actually, 14 inches. They're out of range. That's the end of skirmish fire. Uh, we've already started artillery fire, so let's continue that over here on the far left side. This battery is in canister range of the blues. It's gonna hit them with the good stuff. Uh, Top, uh, what is it, effective uh, battery or whatever it's called? I, hang on a second. Standard battery fire plus two casualty dice for canister. <laughs> Cavalry takes two casualties plus a discipline check. They are elite, so uh, five plus will make this roll. <laughs> they cut it close, but they pass. Strong work. Uh, that battery can't fire. We are over here to the Italian uh, 7th Brigade. They're going to do counter battery against that uh, Scottish gun up there on the hill. I think they're at effective range. No, it's a long range shot. Sorry about your look. Two casualties. Uh, so they started to get one more. They're up to two now. They have a, dis a discipline check from that roll. They are an elite unit, though, which makes which helps. They go unformed. Working our way back around. These guys cannot return fire because uh, they are in a hesitant brigade and they can't fire at a long range. But let me check the range on this. This gun might be able to fire, though. Ninth Brigade's gun fires at long range counter battery style against uh, these gentlemen down here. Might not have been worth shooting. They suffer a fatigue casualty. British large uh, or core artillery fires a long range uh, arterial assault. Artery is arterial. <laughs> Maybe that's right. I don't know. Oh, they fire everything. Uh, at those gentlemen right there coming up towards them, but it's long range. Artillery assault fire. Sorry, I'm getting falling back on my health uh, healthcare words there. Uh, <laughs> thinking of arterial bleed. Sorry about that. No, we're not having that. Maybe it'll cause it, but we'll see. Uh, plus two uh, combat dice. It pumps that uh, battalion up to three casualties, and they will take a discipline check. Needing a seven. And they go unformed after getting hammered by those cannonballs. Uh, should get some bounce through into the Carbonniers. Okay, let me check the... Yeah. I forgot. I should have got some bounce through on that gun into the guard, too. So the red dice will be the, uh, the British fire and the blue dice will be the French fire. British uh, cannonball does one casualty to the uh, Carboniers, and the French cannonball sails high. The guard skates by again. That gun cannot fire because it's just too much crud in the way. They're, the cavalry is too close to those units. We can get some uh, counter battery fire here with an effective volley against these gentlemen. French gun goes up to two casualties, and that's the end of uh, skirmish and artillery fire. Uh, going on to line firing, let's see what we got. Uh, these four Leger attack columns uh, firing at the Sherwood Forest Regiment. Let's 
closest Leger uh, battalion gets a fire discipline. But they inflict three casualties on the 45th. That's pretty, uh, pretty good. Got to put some uh, cotton down. The Cameron Highlanders are going to fire at the uh, skirmish line here for the uh, Foreign Legion. All right, Grenadier uh, Battalion firing at a skirmish target. Being in fear volley with one CD. What's up with the Scottish? Freaking double six is nice. Do two casualties. Now do a discipline check on the uh, on the Grenad. These guys are Grenadier though. These skirmishers. <laughs> Well, they rocked the hell out of that. Both sides get a discipline check. I mean, uh, not what the hell is it called? The destiny roll. That's awesome. Two double sixes. I'm not 100% sure a uh, discipline check, double six, gets you a uh, destiny roll, but uh, it sounds good. And it was kind of fitting. They both got double sixes. Uh, they both recover one casualty, and they're both down to one each. So, eh, that worked out well. All right, it's the end of the shooting part of the uh, turn. Now it's down to the two hand-to-hands over with the other end of the battlefield. All right, this is an even hand-to-hand. -hand. Both sides have glory, so it makes them even. And, uh, yeah, it should be just like five dice on five dice. Actually, they're both going to get six dice to uh, better blow the hell out of each other. Let's see what happens here. All right, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers win. They are unformed with four casualties. They drive off the French battalion that unforms this battalion as it retreats through them. They are worn now with six casualties. Oh, I think there's a risk for the general too. I gotta check, I can see what happens with that one. All right, rolling 1d6 on a one, Clouseau is mortally wounded. Clouseau survives and uh, returns back to his lines there. <laughs> All right, over here, it's uh, about the same story, I think. I'm trying to remember. I think it's, well, I'll tell you some background on this. It's Easter Sunday, so I started this before going to church and having our Easter party with our family. So I'm trying, I think the French had Elan on this one. And the, uh, the British, the, the 35th was unformed. Uh, no glory involved here. The French have five dice. The British will have four. Check that. The French will have six dice, and the uh, British will have four. Yay, the French finally win something. Uh, second battalion of the 70th wins and takes the ground. They suffer one casualty, go up to two. The 35th streams around the outside of the built-up area. They can't really unform uh, the Earl of Uxbridge, but they uh, form in line here after they retreat with uh, five casualties. And that's the only other, com that's the last combat of uh, turn two. Do some housekeeping and cleaning stuff up and then it's on to turn three. All right, turn three, uh, core, uh, core command dice time. Napoleon's up first. Let's see what we can do. He got a one on his headquarters die, so his core adjutant can reroll that. All right, so no spy this time for Napoleon. He's going to go without that one. Heading up to Wellington's uh, command tent. Let's see what he can do. He's not going to be riding the line this turn. He gets to re-roll the headquarters die as well. Let's see if he can, his adjutant comes through. All right, he's got everything but the uh, ride the line compared to Napoleon doesn't have his headquarters die. All right, let's do ADC. Start off with Ney. The Prince of Moscow's got five ADC temps. Here we go. Oh, real nice. He gets uh, all of them. Plus, he got a you know three you know double triple sixes, which gets only gets a double six. So he ends up with six ADCs. That's fantastic. Salt has six ADC attempts. Let's see how well he can do. Kind of screws the pooch and just gets three ADCs. All right, over to the Allied side. Picton has six ADCs. He only gets three of those. Not good. 
Earl of Uxbridge going to do his five. And he only gets three to post, so oof. Besides Nay, everybody else kind of muffed it. For Nay, he's going to give a uh, infantry assault and a brigade reroll to 1st Brigade. 2nd Brigade is going to get the same thing. And we're going to forwards tasking for the Imperial Guard. And then Napoleon's going to give his free forwards uh, uh, command again to... Uh, who's this guy? I always forget his name. Sorry. Peugeot, who's been nothing but a disaster. Try to avoid the cavalry, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's that, and that's enough points for him. Over here in Salt Land, uh, Napoleon gave his extra ADC, so he's up to four now to Salt. Uh, and he did infantry assault and um, brigade rerolls for both of these the 9th Legere and. Uh, I think it's the uh, 27th. See if they can push through here. <laughs> Start making a dent in this. The Italians and the... Uh, there's not enough commands for it all. So, and the, the Italians and the, uh, the the Swiss and the Vistia Legion are just going to have to hold off and do what they can. I thought about it and Salt cannot tolerate this crap. He's going to use his uh, CNC command chief of staff go down to one gonna re-roll the three ADCs he failed and pick up two more so Salt kept the other commands he had already so then he goes uh, infantry assault plus brigade re-roll plus a glory on the uh, Vista Legion and then an infantry assault and a brigade re-roll on the Italians oh chief of staff making it happen Picton keeps it simple. He does a uh, glory on a uh, General Pax Highland Brigade. And he does a glory plus a brigade reroll on General Stedman with the Russians. Uh, the Earl of Uxbridge does a glory and a brigade reroll on 1st Brigade. And then he uh, also takes Wellington's extra ADC and does an infantry assault and a brigade reroll on the King's German Legion Brigade. And I forgot the Chief of Staff gains a uh, automatic uh, passing the roll, so he he joins the Italians. So they change their uh, their base of their die to infantry assault and glory, and don't worry about the reroll. And Salt is going in with them. It's roll for hesitancy and uh, a brigade. Uh, Following orders, uh, marked all of uh, Ney's uh, brigades. Let's roll some die, see what happens. All right, they have a brigade reroll, and they would be the only brigade to be hesitant. So uh, Wellington's going to intervene and use his uh, spy. He's going to jump out and make them reroll all that stuff again. Look, Emil's Cavalry Brigade goes hesitant. Oh, terrible. Uh, we do have uh, also 1st Brigade, but they have a Brigade reroll, so they're going to do that right now. Just one hesitant Brigade for uh, Solt. His Cavalry is confused. But uh, let's go on over to... Uh, sorry, for Nay. Let's go on over to Solt and see what's up. All right, Solt time. Let's go. The core uh, artillery brigade goes hesitant. Uh, the, the white dice was the automatic pass. Which, and then the, the purple dice was the Vistia Legion. And they're gonna, they get a reroll. So Salt also has one brigade hesitant, so Napoleon will not have to pay a penalty on initiative. Hey, and I was, uh, something wasn't sitting right with the core uh, Commander, uh, dice and orders, whatever. Excuse me. I went back and watched uh, Check Your Leader TV's uh, boot camp, uh, and <laughs> yep, uh, the core commander only gets to pick um, one of the four or, or one of the existing orders they get. 
So they can't use all the ones they have. They like if they don't. Let's say if they roll, that didn't sound 100% clear, but it might have made sense. If they roll on their the four dice, they roll all sixes on them. Let's say or fives, uh, and they were all available. They can only still only pick one of them. Um, yeah, and I also I think I messed up. Uh, I should have more bold commanders because. Um, are bold brigadiers just because of the, the you know how good Wellington is and stuff like that and and Napoleon but I missed out on that too also the uh, old guard uh, I do have an old guard commander who is bold and Mike Desloire but that's an automatic for uh, the French so I could have put one somewhere else as well so I messed up a couple things there but uh, we're trying to correct them as we're going along um, so just uh, for this turn uh, Napoleon will give his uh, extra ADC out, and uh, uh, Wellington used the spy ability. Unfortunately, it was kind of weak. So we'll continue on from there. All right, I have I've marked, uh, picked in six brigade commanders. Let's go see if any of them are hesitant or not. He does very well, except for uh, General Hawker is going to be hesitant. Uh, with the core artillery brigade. All right, let's do the Earl of Uxbridge's five brigades and see how uh, how he fares. Uh, General Adam leaving uh, leading the third brigade with the King's German Legion uh, is hesitant, but it has a reroll, so he's going to go ahead and take advantage of that. And every one of uh, his uh, uh, brigades are uh, active, so that's fantastic. They're all following orders. Okay, so that means there's no no one's going to get any penalties. The, the entire Seventh Coalition Force only has one hesitant uh, brigade. Uh, Napoleon has one in each of his divisions, and uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Okay, so that means uh, no no benefits. Sorry, no negatives on initiative. Be straight up. And no one used the scouts uh, for a bonus. Napoleon flicks his middle finger at Wellington on top of the on top of the hill. He's still got initiative. Oh, you can't beat the man. Can't beat the emperor, buddy. Sorry. All right, so uh, that's that was close. Uh, French gonna go first. Start down here at the left. Let's see how we can get a clean turn now that we've realized we've made uh, at least we're catching mistakes. You know, that's pretty cool. It would be uh, definitely not a robot here. Not going to get everything perfect in the uh, first couple times. All right, on charge declarations. Uh, going to move in. First brigade is going to attack. Uh, second brigade is going to attack. The old guard has got a forwards tasking. So that's not a charge. They don't have an infantry assault. So they, they're not charging. Uh, what else we got? La, 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 la. Oh, of course, then we've got charge, 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 <laughs> and charge. So, yeah, uh, we're going in everywhere for the uh, Napoleon's doing it again. For the Seventh Coalition, they're going to tr uh, charge their cavalry. <sighs> Let me check the distance. It's close. No, it wasn't close at all. Uh, they're about 15, well, maybe 14 inches away, and they can go 18 inches in column. So they're going to attack this French uh, line. i got to read the rules on, I think the cap, I think the uh, skirmishers have to take a check to see if they can get away or if they disperse because of the cavalry charge. And also, I wanted to charge with the, King's German Legion, but I don't think they can charge a unit that's already charging. So uh, that charge becomes new, uh, moot, which kind of sucks. I wanted to attack, but uh, I think that's the rules. It's kind of a uh, they really if they won that initiative, they could have stopped that attack. So the first brigade closes in on the uh, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers for round two. Uh, Second Brigade of the French attacks the built-up barrier. That would have been a good use of the uh, Sapper's uh, uh, core ability, a core order, if I would have thought of that. Fail on me. Yay. 
Um, over here, this cavalry is going to charge these guys. We're going to remain in uh, column and fire. The skirmishers are going to withdraw. They take one. They can't fire. They take one CD uh, to see if they take damage on the, as they run away. I put smoke in front of all these uh, French columns, but I think only the, the lead unit in the attack can shoot. The other ones can shoot, but then they can't support. Uh, I think support is going to be necessary on this bad boy. Royal Horse Guards coming in, leading the charge, fully supported. French only have two supports there. And I think besides what you already saw for the Italians, uh, the Poles are going in. And they're supported by uh, three of their own battalions against the uh, Highland Battalion there. So we've got seven charges going on. That's, that's pretty awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and start on the uh, far left with the, uh, it would be with the uh, French anyway, as we re-pick up. <laughs> and these guys are unformed back here. They're not in this hand-to-hand. -hand. They're too far out to support. But in the movement phase, they can become, uh, they can reform and get back at it. Uh, first up, we're going to have closing fire by the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. There'll be a uh, sweet, effective uh, volley. Uh, they're line troops. So they don't get the extra veteran grenadier and elite for, for in line. But they do get the, the combat dice for, uh, or the casualty dice for attacking uh, after they're being charged by columns. After reading what a drilled... Uh, in line unit is in the rule book I think all English or sorry all British troops would be drilled in line uh, maybe earlier French not in 1815 <laughs> but definitely British uh, uh, since they're well versed in line and that's the way they, they rocked it so I will be remembering to apply an extra one CD whenever these guys are in line and they're firing. So if I don't remember just because of the sheer size and having, you know, uh, probably 78 infantry battalions on the table, this stand by the Royal Welsh Fusiliers is... <laughs> If they survive this one, they just poured four points of damage into that French attack column as they come towards them, four casualties. Uh, and they've already handled one uh, battalion, so that's that's not bad. Uh, oh, that should... I forgot they are unformed, so that should have actually gone down to a weaker barrage. Let me see if that does anything. Uh, uh, give me a second here. They still rolled an eight. I did order some of the markers from uh, Battlefield Accessories. Right now I'm kind of just kind of leaving little chits around to kind of remember, try to jar my memory so I remember who's what. Uh, and it doesn't always work. Um, when those come, I'm, I can't wait to have, you know, who's unformed, who's worn, who's about to fall apart. Uh, so that'll, that'll help me even more. I got two sets of those from that uh, Battlefield Accessories that Check Your Leader recommended. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get here from Australia. Um, we'll see, but uh, I, they looked great, so uh, I uh, can't wait to start using those. Uh, there's three casualties on that attack column. I think that still is a negative on the, uh, on the charge, but we'll continue with that now. Thanks to that superior musketry by the uh, Royal Welsh Fusiliers, the French will be rolling three dice, taking the lower two. Uh, they do have two supports. Uh, the British will be rolling uh, two dice, and they have one support. That British battalion will not give. Uh, oh, they got an 11. French are sitting at a 6 right now, which is a would be a massive butt-kicking. I'm uh, going to try to re-roll at least one 3, hopefully two 3s, and get lucky here. All right, so far, going in reverse. Rerolling that, too. All right, so they're going to halt and fire. They're going to roll one CD. I'm going to have a little bit of fun here with the Royal Welsh Fusilier. They're going to, because they're a formed unit in a brigade that's following orders, they're going to counter charge. 
So basically, they immediately, we moved to hand-to-hand -hand anyway. But uh, the French, after they fire their die, will be unformed. But so will the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. The Welsh will be up to five casualties, but that's awesome. We're going in anyway. Hand-to-hand -hand time at the end of the turn. All right, these guys are going to go in from uh, 2nd Brigade against the built-up area. The buffs will fire garrison fire against them on their way in. Garrison fire is like skirmish fire. They used to have a half a casualty on them as they come in, so uh, which does nothing. So they'll go in unopposed. It's, and it's only going to be one-on-one, -on -one, I think, for the first turn, but these can't have two... Uh, rounds of combat. Cavalry co versus cavalry can, and I think infantry versus gear, uh, built up area. So we will revisit that uh, storming of the built up area in the uh, melee phase at the end of the turn. I did realize um, when I watched this uh, back, when I was editing the other day's uh, or last night's material, that I forgot to fire this line against the 9th Legere. So uh, I'm going to roll against a volley against one of these brigades, or one of these battalions, then I'm going to roll the one against the units attacking. Because basically I owe them a free volley. It was not the greatest volley, but one casualty on that first battalion on the far left. Uh, the second battalion is the actual lead battalion for this charge. They also suffer one casualty as they close in, uh, and both sides will have two supports. Uh, they will be, actually, they can't be supported by an opposite other brigade, can they? Oh, no, just the, uh, the 45th will only have one support. British are still rolling well. They get an eight versus the uh, French seven. Uh, French are going to start their reroll process with that three, which always means they're going to roll a two. <laughs> you have to talk a little smack there to get those dice to work. They were going, uh, the French have been getting robbed on some crap dice rolls. Uh, so they're up, the French are up to a ten. British are at an eight. The British are going to try to reroll their three and see what they can do. And that's where the two is hiding. Ah, oh, sorry to the 45th. Oh, those two battalions are going to get pushed back. And they're going to unform some stuff on the way back. They're going to go this way. End up in there. Give me a minute here to get all this stuff into position. Oh, a nightmare for the British is General uh, Huzon forces back the, 40, uh, the 45th and the, I think the 59th. They disorder the entire, or they unform the entire Austro-Germanic uh, brigade on their way back to where they are. Uh, plus the 45th takes one, uh, four CD, and I think the other uh, battalion that supported them, they'll take one CD of damage. Ho, ho, ho. That's what Napoleon was hoping for. Ninth Legere, the incomparable. Those guys heard me complimenting the uh, Rural Welsh Fusiliers, and they said, no way, baby, here we come. I gave them 51 odds of just getting obliterated. It still could happen, but they are in the heart of it now. Uh, and there's the 59th and the 45th back here, almost eating up the, uh, the uh, Royal uh, Artillery uh, large battery back here on the hill next to Wellington. They're, Wellington's not too far from these guys. Von Steimus is freaking out. He's going to need a Pepto. Let's do the uh, CD for both of these battalions for falling back. The 45th is at uh, 5 casualty mark and the 59th is at 1. And that completes it. Uh, it's not a victory so they can't keep coming, but that's the 9th Legere. We'll move on to this disaster here as the Russians are going to unload into the uh, the French again, try to hold the ground. Uh, no offense uh, to our Russian viewers. Uh, I'm not going to count them as drilled just because the uh, black powder guys give the Russians, uh, you know, 
they got that rule the what is it the the ball is a fool and the bayonet is a hero we're gonna go kind of follow that uh uh i don't even know what the heck i'm saying they're just gonna fall we're gonna kind of follow that lead of that statement russians are tougher than nails but uh maybe they can't shoot the best still they're gonna blast away with a, a good volley with the extra die for uh uh, attack column coming at him. It's 2nd Battalion, 27th on the charge this time. The Azov uh, Battalion didn't appreciate me talking smack about their marksmanship. Uh, they plant three casualties in a discipline check on uh, the French. That battalion will go unformed and have three casualties, which is going to be a, a big wallop on this charge. French are going to be rolling 4d6, uh, Russians 2d6, French have two supports, Russians have one. Once again, coalition forces holding out on a charge, uh, rolling a 10. Whoa. Uh, thankfully, the Russians got a 5 and a 2, so the, I shouldn't be able to roll a 1 twice, but you never know. Nine versus a 10 right now. French are gonna go for it. They don't care. Oh, 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 it pays off, baby. Yeah, vive la France. Uh, French crash in. Uh, ooh, do the Russians try to re-roll the four? I'm gonna, just for fun, they're not gonna re-roll it, but I'm just gonna roll to see what would happen if I did, just, just for my own curiosity. My own morbid curiosity. An excellent uh, choice by the commander of that Azov uh, battalion, not to tempt the face. Uh, French are going to combat with Elan versus the combat unformed. All right, the Italians have kind of pivoted their battalions a little bit, going with a fresh battalion. Black Watch going to hammer down on them. Uh, going to fire a, a volley with two extra CD. Phenomenal volley by the Black Watch into the Italians. They close in. They take three casualties plus a discipline check. They need a seven. They pass it. I think they actually text. Uh, they tested higher because I for, they only. Uh, I'm doing chief of staff, so assaults with them. With they also have glory too. No, glory's with these guys. Uh, it counts as glory, I believe. So they get they test a, a rank higher, so they only needed a six anyway. So they go in. A grenadier on Grenadier. Still, they did take three casualties, so they'd be rolling 3d6 versus the uh, Highland uh, Battalion's uh, 1d6. Italians have three supports. The Highlanders have one. I think they get the, the what's it called, check? The Destiny, because they did roll double sixes, but they only get nine out of it. So I'm going to go with it. And the Highlanders totally screwed the pooch and got three. Let's go ahead and do the destiny roll right now. So here's a total conundrum. Uh, they were going in with three casualties. Well, <laughs> they roll the destiny. They lose a casualty. They're also going to inflict casualties on the black watch with that uh, that roll they got. <laughs> yeah, did, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, don't worry about it. We'll just go with what we got. So inflict two casualty dice onto the uh, Black Watch. Good time to burn up the snake eyes. All right. Uh, Black Watch has got a one and a two. They got to reroll the one. That is absolutely terrible. Oh, Highlanders aren't going to survive this bad boy. That could be a victory. Hang on, we'd look it up. Okay, so who can tell what the hell's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> look at this look at this crazy guy all right so uh, uh yeah nightmare running out of space okay the black watch and the uh argyleshire highlanders retreated both units uh one will take six cd damage one will take four cd damage two retreating units will falter this brigade which will be figured out later on if they survive as they get pounded by the uh, Vista Legion here. 
uh, Salt and uh, Salt and General Jamin advance on in column and slam into the flank of the uh, uh, of the unformed Prussian line battalion <laughs> uh, it, with the victory thing. So they basically will hit them too. The guard is unformed. Uh, Doug's not going to be thrilled about that as two of his guard battalions are passed through by these retreating units. And it's basically a... Uh, it, the Russians are getting uh, enveloped in a salient over there as they hold out. But as the 9th Leger and the Italians uh, crush everything in between them, they're going to just surround them and put them in a pocket. But what a nightmare. Here's a view from above. It's just a little bit more clear as you see the Italians slamming into the Prussians. The Black Watch and the Argyleshire sure Highlanders are back there behind uh, the guard. And uh, here comes Salt with his two cuirassier buddies just going crazy. <laughs> Heading right towards the uh, towards pack. At least his boys are going to lay down some fire as he goes down swinging. Uh, I guess we'll go on to this charge immediately. Uh, that's not fair. Von Steimus is like, well, wait, wait a minute, I was in reserve. <laughs> oh, it's not. Uh, this is combat with a lawn. Oh, so that'll be out the mark. That way I will remember that. That's a nightmare. We'll get to that later. So we'll be done with that disaster. And uh, they got glory. They've got a lawn. They've got, they're attacking in the flank. It's uh, the poor Prussians making their uh, first appearance at General Day Armé are going to get steamrolled. Uh, good luck to them. They could win. Probably not, but we'll see. All right, and speaking of glory, we've got the uh, Campy at the front of the uh, Vistula Legion attacking uh, what's left of Pax uh, Brigade as it shatters in half. Still, the uh, Cameron Highlanders are going to unleash a uh, fine British volley into the uh, Vistula Legion as they close in. They crush the Vistra Legion with four casualties as they as they come charging in. Uh, and a discipline check. Uh, Vistra Legion is already Grenadier, but with the glory, they're going to make this as elite. And they scrape by and pass. Whoa. Vistra Legion will be rolling three dice. The Highlanders will be rolling two. The Vistra Legion will have or one rank above, so they'll get an extra reroll on top of the three they already get, where the Highlanders only get one. All right, the Highlanders, like a boss, roll a 10. Uh, Vicious Legion are working with a three. Good luck, but they do get four rerolls. Starting off like a boss with that one. We're up to a six versus a 10. What a comeback. 10 versus a 10. They're going to scrap it out even style. They close the combat. All right, on the British charge side, uh, British are going to have three supports. French are going to have two supports. Uh, British are elite in heavy cavalry. So hang on. Let me look at that. It's going to be insane, I think. It's just the elite gets a reroll, and they're also grade higher, so they get a second reroll. So the British are going to have five rerolls. The French get one reroll for being in column uh, versus cavalry. So three rerolls for the French, five for the British. It's just the elite gets a reroll, and they're also grade higher, so they get a second reroll. So the British are going to have five rerolls. The French get one reroll for being in column uh, versus cavalry. So three rerolls for the French, five for the British. French will, the French will roll their one CD as the British come in. Nope. <laughs> no casualties. Here they come. Oh, good luck, gentlemen. Oh, for, for once, the French come through with a big roll in the uh, initiative. It must be the defenders. It's just uh, my uh, dice tower prefers the defenders over the attackers. We got a 10 versus what, a 5? All right, well, a 1's easy to reroll, especially when you have 5 rerolls. Just keep chipping away, that's 7. A little bit of drama, they drop down to 6 with 3 more rerolls. 
when the British pull it out, they're going to close the melee. Oh, it's going to be brutal. Okay, we'll see them in the melee phase. Forget to roll the six CD for the uh, two Highland units that got forced back in retreating. 42nd ends up with four uh, casualty and the uh, 91st ends three. Going on the skirmish shooting, I think we just have these two right here. Uh, French will fire at the British and the British will fire back at these guys blasting away at each other. British skirmishers suffer a casualty and now they fire back with six dice against the French skirmishers. Amazing shooting by the British rifles. They kill a, they take off a skirmish base and put a, an extra casualty on the next skirmish base. Oh, that was some great shooting. It was all sixes. Artillery fire. I think we're going to have these two batteries firing against each other. Everybody else is probably screened. Um, yeah, even, sorry as I panned to the right here. Uh, well, no, that gun can shoot. That gun... Yeah, I can say they can't fire at the those guys because they were charging, but they can fire at the first Royal Dragoons back there. So three of the French guns will be able to fire. Start off with this first gun on the far left of the French line doing counter battery. These guys are just trying to wear each other out. British batteries up to four casualties. This gun, canister range, firing at that same high, uh, King's German uh, Legion battalion they nailed before. Battalion of the King's German Legions up to six casualties now. They are worn. They got a discipline check too for that. That's probably very realistic as they go unformed, as they get hammered by canister twice. This battery is going to fire at the first Royal Dragoons at canister range. They suffer one casualty and they'll take a discipline check. They're grenadier level, so they passed that like a boss. Um, British guns, everyone's is pointing at stuff, is pointing at stuff that's like got a, stuff all over it. I think the only guys that would really have a shot would be the Grand Battery, but they're hesitant, so they can't fire to long range. Um, that's it for, oh, except for the British gun on the far end is going to fire. Uh, at these guys and these dudes are doing death by a thousand cuts to each other uh, three casualties on the uh, French gun battery and four on the British I don't think I have any line shooting just kind of painting the battlefield as I think about it Yeah, those guys would be shooting into themselves. <laughs> That's just, it was nice having the, the depth, but oh, just the fact they're all piled in there just makes it a gigantic mess. The French still have a uh, another brigade back here they can move up. Okay, I think we're going to the movement phase. Or was it movement before shooting? Oh, God, was it? Oh, I messed, I messed it up. No, damn you. Okay. Got all excited about the shooting and forgot to do movement. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's see if I can do it and move anybody. I would like to advance some of these British units. I know the French are going to advance their, the guard. Mike advances the guard nine inches, nays out in front, urging them on. Kind of uh, just staying as a fallback. Uh, these guys will reform. So that's a good thing. I forgot about that. Units that are unformed can reform. This battalion also reforms back here by Napoleon because they're uh, uh, they are they pass the unit is following uh, the brigade is following orders this turn, so that retreat status goes away. Mazarni's uh, six corps or six brigade is going to stay in reserve. Just the Russians have been so tough. Um, if this battalion retreats or brigade retreats or any battalions in the brigade retreat they will have something to fall back onto so that's that's kind of clutch I'll, I'll stay with that and we're basically fully committed on the right so the French have done their movement uh, 
The British can reform some things. I guess their guns up here could reform. All these supports can reform that were that got disordered by the unit passing through them, but I'm not sure. I don't think the Prussians can because they are engaged in a hand-to-hand. -hand. The 59th can unform, but the uh, the 45th retreated. They can't yet. That's next turn if their unit does if their brigade follows commands if it's still standing. And also the guards, uh, they got unformed by the Black Watch and them going through them so they can reform as well. These guys were in retreat status, but their brigade passed orders so they can, they'll lose that status. Some housekeeping done. Good. That went really well. Okay. I think everyone is done with movement. Didn't affect any of the shooting I did. Totally jacked that up. It does go command um charges movement shooting hand to hand uh within the movement phase there's tactical movement and reserve movement so the enemy can't react to your uh reserves coming on and, and of course within the shooting phase it goes uh skirmishers artillery and then line troops firing and then it goes back and forth between whoever the, the uh, initiative uh, player with the initiative goes first and all those. So there we go. Just it was more uh, for me for watching this later. But if you're picking up stuff on this, awesome. I'm uh, really looking forward to my second game of this so I don't screw up these same things as much as I have in this first game. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a great way to learn for me. All right, British charged in the Royal Welsh Fusiliers against the French. Both units are unformed. Let me see what else plays an effect on this uh, bad boy, this melee. <laughs> the Welsh are one casualty away from being warned, but uh, not yet, baby. The Welsh have uh, glory on their side as their commander, uh, the brigadier is with them. The French do not, so uh, the Welsh will be one uh, level higher, so that'll get them some extra die. In this first hand-to-hand, -hand, the Welsh will have uh, seven combat dice, while the French have five. Looking for fours to do some casualties. Oh, this is going to be brutal. The Welsh send another French uh, battalion packing. Those guys are... They retreat. Uh, they have eight casualties. The, the last unit the Welsh beat has got three over there. They're beat up too. Um, the Welsh are up to seven now. <laughs> so those two, the two combatants there are worn. Uh, will the French continue to press their luck? Uh, Clouseau is wondering what these guys are eating. It's the leak, baby. It's unstoppable. Okay. Hell of a stand by the, uh, the Royal Wells Fusiliers. And, uh, Oh, was it which uh it's Halkett I forgot Halkett leading these guys to victory usually the usually the battles for the built up areas are awesome these guys haven't even reached the built up area yet they can't get through the lo uh, the Welsh that are defending the uh, outside of the walls <laughs> uh, on the other hand 35th got shoved back there but they're getting their act back together again uh, here we go against the buffs yes all right, French are going to have six dice. The Buffs are going to have five. We're going into our first fight against a garrison. All right, I got to do some reading here. Uh, we got, they drew. They both take three casualties. Now I've got this fight on with a question mark. <laughs> Let me see what I got to do. So there's no reinforcing at a stronghold. So... The attacking unit is unformed, so they'll both go down, uh, they'll drop down a die, I believe. Let me get that exact numbers. I know they lose one dice from the previous. Yeah, the cavalry fights can get crazy. You can bring in like two units in and they can just start all, everybody slaughters everybody. Uh, the stronghold's a little bit different here. Okay, so it's going to be five on five instead of six on five. Uh, the now that they are unformed. They beat back. Uh, they're going to take some more casualties. Uh, I think they 
The buffs are going to be up to five, and these guys are going to be up to six. They retreat. Uh, they will be unformed, and we have to see if uh, Grenier is killed in the fight. All right, Grenier survives. Outstanding. Okay, um, wow, that's what you want to see from a stronghold battle. Uh, going in, hitting the walls hard, getting pushed back, racking up casualties, unforming stuff, retreating. Thankfully, the French, when they've retreated, they've kept it to uh, one unit per brigade. So uh, they've not had to suffer a falter like the, Brit like the British did over there with the Highland uh, Brigade. All right, uh... Whoa, I guess we'll go to this disaster next. Cavalry versus attack columns. All right, the British are coming in with how many? Hang on. Eight dice versus five in this brawl. That was pathetic hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, <laughs> they only lost two to nothing, but they're dispersed. Attack columns ridden into the ground. Uh, British cavalry crushes them. Oh... Uh, causes a falter on a uh, Peugeot 3rd Brigade in trouble. I can't remember what the heck happened over here. I think the French stopped in line and tried to fire. Um, so after after going back and watching the tape, a little bit of VAR here, the 27th, uh, 3rd Battalion of the 27th against the Azov Battalion, uh, the 27th won the charge they're melee with Alon. The Azov Battalion is unformed melee. So it'll be six dice against four in hand to hand. So after that, the, uh, Az uh, sorry, the 3rd Battalion of the 27th withdraws. Uh, they both have five casualties. They're both unformed. Um, and that's the way that battle, uh, a hand to hand ends. All right, let's do the Italians against the Prussians. The Prussians are unformed and are being attacked in the flank with uh, by an Italian unit with a lawn. Okay, eight versus two with the higher grade troops, the glory, the Elan, um against attacking in a flank and unformed. So savage. Prussians take six casualties. They retreat. Uh, they end up way back here with six casualties. They do unform the uh, Austrian reservists. Ooh. This guy's like, where the hell did they go? <laughs> he just got dressed up to play soldier. He didn't know he was going to have to be a soldier. And here comes the Italians at him like a steamroller. And the final uh, phase over here will be glory on glory. Grenadier on Grenadier, even on even, uh, both getting six dice. Vistula Legion wins, but they're up to six casualties. The Cameron Highlanders are shoved back, unforming the, uh, the their sister battalion behind them, and uh, they were retreating again. This unit's already faltered. Now with three retreating battalions, um, oh, it's going to be tough on pack. We come back in turn four. The uh, seventh coalition being hard pressed, all except for the Russians who just don't seem to notice that they're being pushed into this salient. It's like being back at curse. They don't care. <laughs> uh, British cavalry destroys our first unit as a. Uh, French line battalion is completely incinerated and driven off the field. And uh, French continue to uh, lose over here on the left as the uh, Royal Wales Fusiliers and now the Buffs have repulsed uh, attacks by 1st and 2nd Brigades. Whoa, Clouseau and Grenier are in trouble. Grenier almost got killed at that last attack. All right. We will see you in turn four. What a, what a freaking awesome game. If the goal for turn four is to have the perfect turn with no screw ups. So, uh,
<laughs> let's see what happens. All right, let's get going with uh, core command rolls. Napoleon will go first. All right, the core adjutant will be used on the blue die. That was the only one he didn't get. No riding the line for Napoleon. Let's go over to Wellington. All right, the Duke of Boots is ready. Let's see what happens. His core adjutant will roll his uh, ADC roll, see if he can get that one. Oh, wrong guy. Ah, oh, where are you? There he is. All right, and that's what Wellington's got. All right, so let's go on to uh, Ney first. As he, uh, he's gotta take this objective. That's his, uh, that's his goal. It's on his bucket list. Ney punts it and gets three ADCs. He's thinking chief of staff right now, um, but we'll see. Salt's on a rampage up here, <laughs> leading the charge. Okay, let's see if he can, uh, how many ADCs he gets of his six. Solt gets four, and he does have a faltering brigade, so he's got to get his act together. Now, Picton has two faltering brigades, so he really, really needs this big time. He's got uh, Pax and also, uh, oh, what's the other guy's name? Sorry. General Pack and General Stedman both have faltered. This could be, uh, but the Russians continue to hold on, even though the British, their British counterparts buckled. He comes through like a boss with six ADCs. Great job. Stays off the booze for a turn. My payoff. Earl of Uxbridge enjoying his two legs. Let's see what he can do. Oh no, only two ADCs for, uh, Uxbridge. He's definitely thinking, uh, Chief of Staff. He's got a counter Ney's attack. Ney immediately uses Chief of Staff. He's going to reroll the two ADCs he missed and get two extra. All right, Ney rocks it up to seven ADCs. Oh, wow. Uxbridge is going to counter that. Also use his Chief of Staff. Not the best. Goes to five ADCs. Uh, would have been nice to have seven, but it's better than uh, it's better than what he did have. Speaking of core commands, Picton is going to do stand with me with Pax uh, Highland Brigade. Bring him back. Automatically going to pass um, uh, their faltering check. Salt's the only core commander not using a. Uh, crazy ability this time so he's good all right nay is going all in on uh second brigade and ninth brigade here uh yeah he's gonna give uh infantry assault and glory and a re-roll to uh second brigade and then a forwards and infantry assault and a re-roll to the 9th Brigade. Let me add up that total points. Yeah, that's seven points for all that. Um, oh, I can't because I have to do a freaking uh, brigade. Uh, all right. I forgot I got a, what's it call it? <laughs> Scrap all that, stand by. I totally forgot I have to do a divisional morale uh, penalty on for Peugeot to make sure that brigade doesn't falter. So he gets, there's two there. We go all in on the guard, try to slam through that hole there and attack the, uh, the Royal Wells Fugiliers uh, with a forwards, an infantry assault, and a reroll. So, because they can't, they get two ADCs, so the bold brigadier thing is exempt. So that's four, at six, and then a reroll on second brigade. What's more important, rerolling second brigade or rerolling the cavalry? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I run. Stand by. 
All right, reroll on the cavalry brigade. It's going to come back and bite me in the butt. All right, so there's a good chance that nothing. These guys could falter over here, or not falter. Uh, go hesitant. They're going to get wailed on. The only thing that's going to go for them is the uh, the lead uh, battalion for the King's German Legion has been just sh shellacked with uh, canister fire for two turns in a row. <laughs> All right, we'll see if it works. I don't know if it will. Salt's only got four commands. He's going to go with four infantry assaults with his main line battalions and not put any rerolls in. <laughs> Could be crazy. We'll see if it works. Dicton's going to lose two ADCs with Stan with me. Uh, then he's going to do a reroll and a divisional morale on uh, uh, Stedman's. Brigade, so we're up to uh, four ADCs of his six so far. And then he's going to do a brigade reroll on uh, von Steinmetz's seventh, and he's also going to do a forwards on a uh, on Doug Carmichael in the guard with only one command that'll leave his bold open for the reroll. All right, um, Uxbridge is going to lose his mind. Adam is going to get a uh, infantry assault and a reroll. This uh, Hawk Halkett is going to go on the offensive and get an infantry assault and a reroll, and then uh, Stewart is going to get a reroll and hopefully uh, redeploy into the uh, built-up area. So let's see what happens here. That'll get the fresh troops into the built-up area. All right, all of Ney's uh, brigades have been marked. Let's see what's uh, following orders. All right, everyone was active except for Emil, who I did put the reroll on after much debate. Let's see if he can keep it together here. And on that recheck, uh, Peugeot got a five so he's following orders he's rallied he's going to be considered hesitant on uh this turn all right i've got all six of Soltz brigades marked uh none of them uh has a reroll except for the uh the vista legion because they do have a uh i think it's campy it has a uh he's a bold brigadier damon has been like hesitant the entire game this guy's like been chilling he fired the first turn and, and he's been hesitant ever since so <laughs> he's the only one he had no reroll so that's it Picton's gonna do stand with me so he'll rally he's gonna do that with uh pax brigade uh we're gonna do a brigade morale on a uh up front here on i can't even remember this guy's name on stedman's with the Russians, a so that's four already. Now he's gonna try an infantry assault and a reroll on uh, von Steinmetz. Gonna try to stop the incorrigible. Well, let's see if this goes okay. Hope it's not a total nightmare. He hits a home run, outstanding. Picked and coming through like a boss. Uh, the Russians also rally, so that's phenomenal. Yes. See how Team Picton does over here on the right. They've been doing phenomenal. The only unit to go uh, hesitant was Halkett's brigade, and then Wellington riding the line comes down, reverses that hesitant. They're back on line. Their infantry assault is good. Oh, wow. Wellington, tip of the spear. As far as initiative goes, both sides will have two dice. All the uh, faltering brigades followed commands and have rallied, which is great, but they're considered hesitant this turn, um, which is no big deal. Just both divisions have one that's hesitant. Uh, this one, I think with Stan with me, automatically gets rid of that hesitant. They're automatically following commands. 
So that's, I gotta double check that, but yeah, let me do that now before I do initiative, just make sure I don't screw it up. Um, they also, uh, he also heals some damage too. He, they lose some casualties as, uh, as the Corps Commander joins uh, General Pack. Yeah, the the Highland Brigade automatically follows commands. Three of the uh, three of the battalions all uh, gain one or lose one casualty, which will be helpful, and uh, they can do. They're back in business. All right, so we've got an even morale, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Or it's not even morale. Excuse me, easy uh, even initiative, uh, and it was you know. I think I got everything right. I did. I could edit out my going back and forth on what it, what I wanted to do with each uh, brigade when I had some struggles there on decision making. But I think it's kind of important to show that, it, and I think that's a great thing about this uh, ADC system is you can't do everything you want to do. I mean, it's it's painful. You want to do this. You want to do that. You you don't want to ignore. A side of your uh, of line, you're like, and you've got, you want to attack everywhere, but you just can't do it. It's there's a, uh, it's kind of cool. I really, uh, I think it's neat, and it's it's frustratingly good if that's such a thing. It's uh, it's it's a real challenge. It makes your brain hurt a little bit. Okay, so let's do initiative. Can Wellington win it? Oh yeah, Wellington's uh. Putting himself out there in the front of first brigade, showing them what's boss. It just it, cause you think you have to cruise across the entire front of the battle. It just fired up the uh, uh, fired up the British and the, and the whole seventh coalition forces, and they seized the initiative from uh, Napoleon and his allies. The Army du Nord confused. <laughs> okay, well after all that uh, lovely slobbering speech of mine uh seventh coalition will have initiative over napoleon oh yeah king's german legion they're going to charge and attack the uh second brigade before they can go in against the built-up ob objective also these guys are going to charge out and attack first brigade go on the offensive they're going to give the uh they're going to give the uh uh, the Welsh a break. They've been, they've been carrying the the flank uh, with Wellington there. They should do amazingly well. Also, uh, British cavalry will continue to assault um, against uh, the forces of uh, General Peugeot. See if the Third Brigade gets beat up. Von Steinmetz is going to attack the Ninth. And the British Guard is actually going to attack the Italians in a charge. Or right, I'll move all those and we'll see what it looks like. So it's a very cool rule. Uh, if you complete a charge with infantry assault, units that can support basically cover the ground to support. So the 1st Brigade ends up there. I uh, have to do a little bit of creative geographical stuff just because these units are so damn big. But that's uh, first brigade completes their charge with the uh, I think it's the bus in the lead. Maybe not. Who is that actually? Let me look. No, it's the 40th Second Somerset leads the charge. All the rest of the units in the brigade, all the other battalions are beat up. Um, they're pretty much <laughs> they've been carrying the weight while the they never the the uh, Welsh protected the 40th from ever being attacked. So they are they're fresh. They're taking the lead. Over here, uh, the damaged King's German Legion, King's German Legion Battalion kind of sidestepped a little bit, and uh, their sister uh, battalion moved in front and did a flank attack against the French from 2nd Brigade. So that kind of takes the wind out of the sails of that attack. Uh, cavalry slammed into these guys, or is going to try to. Von Steinmetz, uh, for better or for worse, with his Austrian uh, regulars in the front, has gone in and attacked with support from the Welsh and the Austrian uh, militia battalion. The Prussian battalion I have is still 
like in a retreat status. Well, now they're just unformed. They're way back there. Well, they will be unformed after the, uh, well, not their fallen commands. They can follow, they can come out of that now, but they couldn't join the attack. So they're up against the ninth. Russians are hesitant, can't move. And then the guard has uh, woven their way out of, uh, from behind the, uh, the, uh, the Highlanders and have attacked into uh, the Italians. So, whoa, nice. Uh, to counter that, first up, the Foreign Legion of the Vistula Legion and the Swiss are going to hit the uh, the remaining uh, Highland Battalion right now. First Battalion of the Swiss has gone in leading the attack, fully supported by uh, its sister battalion and the Vistula Legion. I can't think what else the... I don't think the French have any other... Uh, they can attack against the Russians again. That's always a great idea, because that's gone so well. So they'll send in their remaining battalion against them. They go in with that. I forgot they have two battalions left that aren't hurt yet. They have two other battalions that have been thrashed. And uh, these guys are going to stay in reserve in case the, the Russians continue to uh, beat the heck out of everybody. The 9th are already in the fight. Cavalry would charge, but they the French cavalry, but... Uh, these guys are already involved in a charge, so they beat them to it. And uh, I think everything over here, the the guard was also going to charge. They have a forwards uh, command. I don't know where the heck they're going to end up when they do move. So that's going to... We'll have to see what's left of the French when uh, this gets done. Do Halkett versus the embattled Clouseau over here in a charge. French only have one support that's in range. The British, had, the 40th has two. Uh, they will do their one die of closing fire. Looks like they're both just rolling 2d6 and the uh, British will have more rerolls. Alright, British get a 10. French have a 7, but they do have a 1. They're going to try to reroll that right now. The Brits will take it. They're going to combat with the lawn. French will fight unformed. A brutal charge into an unfl uh, <laughs> a flanked French line unit by a grenadier British unit. Okay, if charged in the flank, they have to take a discipline check. If they fail the discipline check, they don't get a seven. The uh, automatic victory is a, is allotted, which is going to be a nightmare. If they do, they can turn to face. I learned something new uh, that they pass that so they will fight it automatically doesn't turn to a charge anymore it turned they can't shoot they just fight and the King's German Legion combats with the lawn and the French unit uh, will uh, combat unformed all right the horse guards going in again since they took no casualties they attack this column uh, should I do it or I'm going to try to form square. Probably a disaster. So for the flare, for the dramatic, these guys form square. I added some of the skirmishers into the square. Uh, and they'll take the cavalry charge from the uh, real horse guards in square. All right, they're both going to have 2d6. The French will have one re-roll. The British will have five. Whoa, with all that elite and being a higher troop grade and all their supports, and it's just going to be a nightmare. I don't think you can roll any better than that. <laughs> Double ones for the French! Or that battalion is destroyed. The other battalion chose to form square. Uh, that double one was at like a minus seven. <laughs> oh, decimation. Uh, they will take four CDs of... Uh, four casualty dice of damage, and they will be retreating, and they're back there. Uh, the British cavalry is charged on and engaged with the lawn versus the uh, cuirassiers. No, it's the carbonier, excuse me. They suffer two, CD, uh, two casualties, and Peugeot's brigade is faltered again. They can't take this stand up against the uh, Royal Horse Guards. They're getting crushed.
All paid to come and watch. Cavalry on cavalry. Oh. If uh, French cavalry can't stop this, Napoleon gets going to get it captured, baby. He's got his poison out. He's ready to go. All right, here come the Austrians. They're one of their first hand-to-hands, at least for uh, for this rule system. I can't remember if they got in a fight in the Valor and Fortitude game or not. Uh, they're going to fight the ninth. So this could be... Uh, Let's see if they can win this one. Uh, they have uh, just one support, while the uh, French Leger have two. Both sides are going to accept the draw with the double, double tens, double fives. That's nice. Uh, we'll do hand to hand at the end of the turn. Let me not cheat. Let me uh, see if the Leger will do one casualty these guys or not. The attack column does fire a volley and does a one casualty on the Austrians. All right, guard coming in on the Italians. Italians are gonna fire their uh, one shot at the guard. I used the green dice there to show the Italians some love. All right, the guard takes, uh, first, first guards take one casualty on their way in. First Guards only has one support, but uh, they are elite, so they get a second reroll, and they are a grade higher than the uh, Italians, so they get a second reroll. The Italians are fully supported and have, a th have three rerolls. I forgot to remove that extra dice out of there, so but I'm not going to take away a double six. The Italians hit a home run. But let's start the reroll process for the guard. They got a seven right now, or an eight, excuse me. They got one more reroll. They're at a nine right now. Oh, they have two more rerolls. All right, we'll try one more time. What the heck? It's the guard. It's Carmichael. He's got to be a man. Also, the Italians will get a destiny roll at the end of this. All right, right now we're looking at a halt and a volley, which isn't bad from a line unit. Oh, well, I think you got to do it. Uh, I, I think uh, there's no way I'm going to beat a four. Even with Doug got lucky on that one. So we're going to go ahead and do a volley from the uh, guards. They could completely destroy these guys anyway. It's a hammer, the Italians, taking up to five casualties, and they have to take a discipline check. The guard becomes unformed as well. The Italians become unformed after getting hammered. Now they do their dis their uh, destiny roll. Hopefully it's awesome. Oh, yeah! The Italians stay unformed, but they do recover one casualty going down to four, and they inflict two CD on the guard. First battalion of the foot, uh, foot guards is now unformed. They jump up to three casualties themselves. So uh, pretty good for no hand-to-hand. -hand. All right, that ends the Seventh Coalition's charge. Now we've got this massive charge against this unsupported uh, Highland Battalion. It's the Gordon Highlanders. They got to do it, baby. Come on. All right, first of all, we got closing fire. They do pick up a fire discipline. Oh, but they do inflict two casualties with the casualty dice on the Swiss as they close in. Not enough to affect this, though, so it's going to be two on two with all kinds of rerolls for the, uh, the uh, Army du Nord. Five versus a nine. Uh, the Swiss are going to go for total domination and reroll their three. First one fails. They got two more, baby. Let's keep it going. Oh, yeah, we'll stop right there as it's total domination. Thankfully, the Gordon Highlanders didn't have any supports. Otherwise, the the uh, brigade would have faltered. Uh, they're shoved back. They've got their fire disciplines thrashed. They've got to retreat. They take 66 uh, CD. They take four CD as they're blasted away by the uh, Swiss. Uh, infantry cannot follow on like cavalry, so there's no more charging there. Uh, last 
charge will be over here. As once again, <laughs> the French go against the Russians. Uh, the Russians have five casualties. They are unformed. They have one support. The French have two supports. And that's where we're at. All right, it's six versus three. Uh, the Russians will use their one support to reroll their one. Nice, they're up eight to six. Now it's time for the uh, French to use their two. Eight versus eight. The French are gonna push their luck and try to beat a three. Nine versus eight. The French will melee with the lawn. Will they ever defeat the Russians? I doubt it. All right. <laughs> they still have a guard battalion back there waiting in the... Shh. That's going to be fun. Okay. Um, that's the end of the charge phase. Brutal. Melee phase should be absolutely stupid. And uh, skirmish phase... Oh, movement will be next. Sorry. We'll do... I almost forgot it. Woo! Almost ruined my perfect turn. All right. So we'll... Get some movement going on, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, look at it. I'm breaking out the pointer. Uh, second battalion who is here has moved into the built-up area, taken over from first uh, brigade. Sorry, uh, Hanoverians stayed in attack column because they can do that because they're not British. Uh, two British line units have uh, occupied the built-up areas, and then a uh, the 30th from Cambridgeshire is uh, taken up. The outside defense on the uh, left BUA. The old guard is streamed into the center here, which is going to get, it's getting kind of ridiculous in here. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's kind of the, the British have a very nice, if you look, almost, you know, it's definitely an L shaped ambush, but it's almost a complete defilade. From firing from both directions and the front. Uh, they could completely pincer them and surround them and engulf them Zulu style if they come out here and come around here and get them in a total just surround them and crush them. But we'll see if that happens. Again they always told us in uh, infantry school when you're you get by these ambushes you're supposed to tack right through them. So we went with that. The French have decided to uh, follow the USMC uh, attack tactics and they got ambushed pushing through it going right for the objective it could be stupid but we're doing it uh this these guys stayed here nothing moved here uh following their usual doctrine of the british i'm trying to it's actually working out to be kind of traditionally traditional uh this brigade has come down formed a heavy column or an, and are uh taking the flank of the ninth leger so you can start seeing some issues forming here is the British have basically punched a hole and separated the two different uh, French divisions into one uh, while maintaining their their line so that's that's got to be worth some cool points but I don't know we'll see if it works uh, the battalion that was the brigade that was in reserve here under who is this anyway hang on a second Sorry, he hasn't done much all game, but you know that's not a bad thing being fresh. Uh, six under Mazerny <clears throat> has moved in next to uh, the fifth, and they're going to join in, circle in fresh, and they're also going to offer supports to the Italians as they push through. And of course, you've got the uh, the uh, Vistula Legion and the Swiss hammering through the uh, far flank. So, yeah, pretty good, good stuff here. Uh, that's movement. It looks absolutely nuts from up here. It looks like a traffic jam on the Eisenhower in Chicago. <laughs> and uh, over there's like a parking lot of doom as well. So, excellent. What you want to see from the Napoleonics? Just tons of uh, flags intermingling and guys at point blank range. Uh, I think we'll do shooting next. I don't know if there's any skirmishers that can fire. I think everything's engaged. I'll double check. Artillery might 
there's still a couple cannons that can fire and uh, we'll go from there uh, I'm kind of scanning left to right that British gun can't shoot there's no skirmishers in here this French gun is going to, be able to blast away on the buffs out here uh, this gun is going to, be able to blast on those Hanoverians this guy is going to be able to do a broadside on them those two British guns can't shoot anything See, technically these skirmishers could fire they're gonna fire on these guys that's a skirmish unit um, I could let now these French skirmishers can now nah, they're, they're kind of out of it because these guys are all fighting they're in hand-to-hand -hand here that would be too confusing you think they're pretty lines well not pretty but they're they're all in line here but really these guys would be just in a big blob and the skirmishers would be in there too, stabbing and slashing. So this is a ongoing melee right now. So, and then um, I think this is not a melee, but no one could shoot here. They've already shot. They've already taken part. They've already shot. Technically, this gun and those skirmishers can fire at the uh, at the Swiss and the Vistula Legion. So we can do that too. All right, first uh, skirmishers for the British are this 95th unit is going to fire at these guys with six die. All right, very nice shooting. They put five casualties on that unit. Well, two more. Now they're up to five. Sorry. Up here, these uh, skirmishers loss of fire six shots into the Swiss. They put two on them. British gunners are shooting great. Uh, that's the end of the skirmish phase. We'll go right into artillery over here. This British gun will fire a uh, canister into the face of that same battalion. Unfortunately, the double six was on the uh, the casualty dice. They do two, taking that up to four, but they also put a casualty on themselves, which is great. French eight-pounder canister fire into the buffs. Yep, three casualties and a discipline uh, check on them. Up to eight casualties. Once again, the uh, when I shoot with the French, the blue dice are the primary dice. The double six was on the uh, casualty dice. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. Woo, eight casualties. So because they're worn, they go down to reservists on this one. So it's going to be eight plus to pass. That was too much for the bus as they retreat. Uh, they go through the 35th and unform them, and they retreat off the off the map, and they are gone. They disperse. This battalion firing at who they've already shot at. Eh, it's kind of they'd be shooting at the Hanoverians would be safer. That way they avoid any kind of contact with their own unit. Be it a canister fire once again. Hanoverian Field Battalion from Bremen gets hammered for four casualties in a discipline check. They're considered a, I believe, a reservist unit, so they're uh, going to need an eight. <laughs> Huzzah! They keep it together. Great job. These guys should die next turn, but they're going to fire a canister shot at the uh, First Dragoons. Took them up to uh, four casualties, and they're grenadier units, so they'll uh, make us need a six plus to stay uh, past the discipline check. Oh, they eat ball bearings for breakfast. No big deal for them. There are no line battalions to shoot. Everyone's kind of engaged in hand to hand. Or so uh, we go on to the melee phase. Whoa! Here we go. This is going to be awesome. First up is the uh, 40th versus the 1st Battalion of the 36th, 40th melee with the lawn versus the unformed, the deformed, I'm just kidding, the unformed Frenchies. French, fighting strong there. They uh, win the battle with a draw, uh, <laughs> hold the ground unformed, and the British would draw which is not a negative thing like our treat, but still, they're back there on formed, uh, they 
move back behind the built up area. All right, French kind of hold their own on the first one. Next one, uh, King's German Le uh, Melee, uh, King's German uh, Legion uh, with Alon versus uh, a French line unit, but also the King's German Legion are Grenadiers. They're going to have like seven. Yeah, they're going to have a lot. Hang on. KGL Battalion kicks the snot out of that French unit who slides to the right, retreating. Uh, there was an avenue of escape there, so that's kind of good. And uh, they take six casualties, and they retreated. Uh, KGL only suffered two casualties. They just ran through skirmishers and brigade commanders and a corps commander. Ney is not happy. He is unformed. <laughs> All right, this should be massive. Cavalry battle. Uh... Royal Horse Guards versus the Cuirassiers. Oh, elite versus Grenadier. Uh, horse Guards do have Alon. All right, the Life Guards win by one over the Carboniers. We're gonna they are gonna fight on. The Alon's gone, but now the Carboniers are unformed. Uh, the Horse Guards. Or, uh, sorry, I got the name wrong earlier. The Horse Guards, the Blues. Are going to reinforce, but so are the, uh, you know it, baby, the Cheval. Where the hell these guys call? I always forget the Guard de Cheval are going to also reinforce. Oh, so this could be insane. As we're going to get so many dice. What a disaster! Everybody punted except for the Guard de Cheval, who just hit a home run. And they absolutely destroyed uh, the horse guards. Uh, the total points or casualties did favor the uh, French, who win. The British cavalry is forced to retreat, uh, disordering the Queen's own hussars or un unforming them, and also putting a falter on uh, to possibly. So he's got that to deal with. These guys fall back, I think it was like 24 inches, and they've retreated. Um, Casualty-wise, um, I think it's eight and six. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. For those two, uh, the Carboniers are worn, too. They have eight casualties themselves. Um, as the lifeguards did a pretty good job on them. And, but they... Uh, the horse guards themselves, they forgot to unsheath their swords. They're trying to headbutt people or something. Uh, the guard de cheval only take two. And I think they inflicted like eight. So <laughs> they, uh, or I think they got seven? No, they got eight. It was, it was crazy. Um, no, it was seven. Sorry, seven. Um, so that was pretty nuts. They hit like everything. So, wow. Okay. So the F French somehow pulled that out. And after that nightmare, I think. I think we're on to the Austrians uh, against the uh, against the uh, Ninth Leger. And this was an even battle. They both rolled double fives. That's correct. Pathetic. Uh, the Ninth Leger only inflicts two casualties, but the Austrians don't even make contact. They lose, they get crushed, they have to retreat. They unform the entire Seventh Coalition all the way to back there. Every single unit is unformed. Uh, and they are up to three casualties as they are crushed by the Ninth Leger in the most pathetic way. All right, that was pretty sad. On to the good stuff. The Azov Battalion. Oh, these guys and the, and the Welsh have been like everything the... Uh, Seventh Coalition of asked for, and so much more. Can the Azov Battalion win another hand-to-hand? -hand? Oh, they're getting they're getting beat up. They're up to five casualties. They are unformed. Uh, the French have a lawn, so it's going to be six dice against four. And finally, the French drive back their nemesis, the Azov Battalion. Still waving their flags back there, rallying their boys together. Up to nine casualties. They disorder the rest of the, uh, or unform the rest of the Seventh Coalition that the, <laughs> that the Austrians didn't get already. It's just like a wrecking ball going through their lines. Uh, French victory. 
Yes, strong work. At the end of the hand to hand, the uh, the guard ended up doing a volley and crushing the Italians, and the uh, uh, the Vistula Legion, the Swiss, were able to drive off the the uh, the Highland Brigade or Highland Battalion, the Gordon Highlanders, I should say. And that'll bring turn four to a conclusion. We'll do a fly across the battlefield. I'm going to get my pointer out because it makes me feel important and special on the inside. Uh, Vistula Legion's great. Italians up against the guard who's here. Uh, you got remnants of the uh, Highland Brigade reforming back there. Uh, we've got a lot of casts off from this Russian Brigade here. They've got uh, tons of junk back there along with the Austrian. My, von Steinitz's uh, brigade has been blown back there too. It's a complete and utter mess back there of disordered, unformed, and retreating units. The entire British, or sorry, an entire 7th Coalition is unformed. Even the Guard would be as as the uh, as the Azov Battalion went right through there. And then you got the the Austrians went right through there. So I mean, I don't have enough tokens right now to uh, unform that entire mess. I'm just going to assume that blob is unformed. Uh, second they get to the movement phase, they're going to do some reforming, but uh, that's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, British still in a decent position with splitting the, the forces, but definitely weakened now that the uh, lifeguards and the uh, Royal Horse Guards have both been driven back by the combined uh, Carbonniers and the uh, Garde de Cheval, Imperial. Uh, Queens on Hussars, they're disordered. First Dragoons hammered by canister fire. Only untouched, really, cavalry squadron for the British right now are the, uh, uh, the Scots Greys, which, you know, they, they've done it before. They could crush the uh, what's left of the French. We'll see. Uh, this brigade is in shambles back here. Uh, French getting driven back here by the King's German Legion. British have reinforced and repopulated their second line as they drive on. We did have some artillery actually destroy the buffs, which is sad because I love them. And uh, French, you know, they're going to be pumped up from Victor, but these battalions, these brigades, both of these, are uh, running out of steam. they both showing a lot of wear and tear, a lot of casualties lot of problems and the nice thing about it here comes the wrecking ball the imperial guard with mike de slaray pointing them like a cruise missile right at the built up area and uh there are fresh british troops back there and uh, hanoverian but uh it's gonna be rough they could take the built up area uh taking that area up there. I don't know how the heck that's going to happen. Uh, and this battle report is get, <laughs> is getting long. Uh, I will cut it off at the three hour mark. Uh, but I'm getting, i got to be close to that. I think I'm at two and a half or something right now would be my best guess after all the editing. So, uh, but we'll see what's going on. It's getting, uh, it's getting a bit in lunacy, but it's pretty dang awesome. I love it. All right, let's get the fight on. All right, let's start off with core orders on turn five. Rolling Napoleon's four dice of love. Core adjutant gonna roll that black die one more time. Napoleon is fully armed and operational. He's got all the dice to pick from. Wellington's got a haul butt away from the guard and go somewhere else here. He's still riding the line right now, so he's only gonna, he's, uh, we'll roll the red, the white, and the black. All right, Wellington's re-rolling the black dice with his core adjutant. Um, he's got the other two are non-available. All right, let's roll ADCs for Solt and Ney. I'll do them simultaneously. Uh, Solt will be the purple die. All right, Ney only got three. Uh, Napoleon immediately spe spends his one core order and gives Ney an extra ADC, so he's up to four. 
Solt hits a home run and gets six ADCs right out of the gate. All right, let's do Uxbridges and uh, Pictons. Picton does a good job of also getting six uh, ADCs. Uh, Earl of Uxbridge kind of tanks it. Uh, he only gets three, and Wellington does not have the red die to offer him an ADC. He only can do a forwards or a spy thing. For Nays, for uh, ADCs, he's going to put a Brigade Reroll and a uh, Divisional Morale on Peugeot again, try to keep this party alive. And then uh, Infantry Assault. Ooh, this, let me think about this one. Yeah, just an Infantry Assault on the Guard. I don't want to put two down because I, I only have one other last command. And we'll do a... Uh, wow. We'll try an Infantry Assault over here without a reroll. Picton's doing an Infantry Assault without a reroll on the Leger. Uh, infantry assault and a reroll over here for three. Infantry assault and a reroll on the Italians for five. And just a straight up infantry assault with uh, the Foreign Legion. Picton's going to try an infantry assault and a reroll uh, on this brigade down here under Mitchell. Uh, He's also going to do a slew of brigade rerolls um, uh, on the on pack, so that'll be uh, that gets three points. One on the uh, the Russians down here for four. They'll do an infantry assault too, make it five, and then uh, give a reroll to von Steinmetz. Earl of Uxbridge is going to do a divisional morale and a reroll on the cavalry. And uh, and then his other one's going to be an infantry assault and a reroll on the King's German Legion. That's all four of his. Oh, well, he only has three, so he's not even going to have a reroll on that one, on the King's German Legion. Now he's going to make a quick change for a reroll. Uh, he's just going to do an infantry assault without a reroll on the uh, on the guard. And then the divisional morale and a reroll for two. And then, uh, I guess you don't have to do infantry assault on the cavalry, do you? Interesting. I guess we'll just do a glory on the cavalry to add some little bit of spunk to this attack. All right, uh, one of the failures was the Imperial Guard. They get an automatic reroll. And the other total disaster was the Divisional Morale. And Peugeot had a reroll as well. So Ney gets his dream come true, everything passes. I'll have to readdress Mitchell. Uh, he actually is under, under Uxbridge's command and Uxbridge doesn't have enough uh, commands to do that. I guess he could do the infantry, the divisional mor morale and the uh, uh, divisional morale and a reroll on uh, the cavalry and then do an infantry assault over here and infantry assault over here and just hope he passes. And oh, he only has three. Nope, he can't do it. So he's just going to do the one over here. And uh, that Mitchell's going to just have to sit there and wait. Not enough commands. King German Legion goes hesitant. Oh no, that was their big attack. No reroll there, just not enough ADCs available for Mitchell. Uh, these guys do have a reroll and they totally punted on the. Uh, uh, on the divisional morale roll. All right, they are following commands, so that's good. All right, let's see what Salt can do. If you can believe it, Damon going <laughs> hesitant uh, one more time. That's four turns in a row he's been hesitant. That's horrible. Mazarni has a re-roll. Going to try it out. He makes everything but... Uh, Domon. <sighs> Wellington's going to give his forwards bonus as a core order to uh, Johnstone. Try to get this unused brigade into the fight. Or right, let's try Picton. He's somewhere in there. Oh, Pax, the only one who goes hesitant. He did not have a reroll. 
Well, actually, he did. I forgot after uh, I figured out I didn't have a uh, uh, Mitchell in this uh, in this core. I actually gave it to uh, Pack. He gets a reroll. Let's see what happens. And Picton's core is all active. That's great. All right, uh, initiative is even. Both sides have one a hesitant uh, brigade each because of uh, the, the divisional orders when they rally the faltering brigades, they come back as hesitant. So Nay's got one and the Earl of Uxbridge has one. So that's where we're at. Army du Nord seizes back initiative. Oh yeah. Here come the charges. We'll be right back after we go through all the French charge and charge movements. It's gonna be a mess. Alright, the guard charges the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. That's that's a worthy uh opponent finally for the Welsh. <laughs> you go up against the Imperial the old guard, the Grenadiers. Uh I think that's the 30th over there. Here we go. Uh, that battalion's going in. They got a fresh unit going in against them. It's not much, too much fresh left over from this right. Actually, might not be fresh. They could be beat up. I think they have like two casualties, uh, which is still decently good. Um, cavalry. They bypassed the Scots Greys and the first dragoons and just went right ahead and pounded the uh, uh, the, the Queen's own Hussars looking for a victory to charge on into the uh, not not anywhere near prepared or into infantry so they can that's they guess to be in the forward so probably go into those gentlemen over there uh, the ninth goes in against the Hanoverians who were unformed uh, Mazarnese's fresh troops go in against the unformed Russians Italians circled, they, uh, they got a new unit up to the front, and they're going against the unformed guard. And then also the same thing with the uh, the, Pol uh, the Vistia Legion circled their, one of their last uh, fresh battalions to the front and uh, charged in against, uh, I think it's the Cameron Highlanders, I'm not sure, but one of the Highland uh, battalions. So that's going to be ugly as all get out. Due to being unformed and hesitant and just all out, not getting any orders, uh, no charges by the uh, 7th Coalition. Just going to sit back and take it like a boss. All right, going from left to right. Thankfully, the Welsh only have seven casualties. One more and they would drop down on their uh, volley. They're going to shoot at the old guard as they come in. Uh, they're still unformed, I think, from a unit passing through them last turn. So they... That will get cleared in the movement phase, but uh, not for right now. So uh, it will go down to a, a little bit of a cruddier volley. <laughs> two casualties in the Old Guard Grenadiers. Uh, the Welsh have two supports. The Old Guard have three. On this charge, uh, they're both rolling. Oh, hang on. To drop down to 3d6, hang on. The Welsh will be rolling 3d6 and taking the lower two. Uh, they have two re-rolls. Uh, the Old Guard will have a 2d6 and they have five re-rolls. All right, with initial impact, the French have 10 and the uh, Welsh have five. Uh, gonna break out some re-rolls, roll the two. Six to ten right now. They're gonna re-roll the the three and see if they can beat it. Oh no, they dropped down to a five. Uh, they're losing by five right now. Old guard's gonna go for the wipeout. They're gonna try to go for. Uh, is there? If they get a six, they can get eleven and win by six. First re-roll, no. Oh, it's getting nervous. Two re-rolls. Now they're going in reverse. Can they save it with uh, they got two more left? Oh, that got a little crazy there. They get the uh, six-point victory. Oh, the Royal Welsh. Let's see what happens to them. 
uh, the path of least resistance is to route off the battlefield that direction. So they're both gone. I'm not sure what's left of that brigade. Hang on. It wouldn't even have mattered if they would have stayed on the table. If you retreat with six or more casualties, you automatically disperse. Uh, one of them had eight and one had six, and they were still going to get more casualties from the charge. So they were going to split either way. All right, Halkett's brigade lost has lost three of its line battalions of its four. So it falters. Uh, the remaining line battalion flees. And their artillery section is abandoned and their skirmishers are dispersed into the ether. And uh, the Earl of Uxbridge loses an ADC as Halkett is out of here. He's had enough of Ath. He's going somewhere else. All right, these uh, this will be an even battle over here as the uh, both units will get two uh, two die on the charge, plus oh, so the British will have two rerolls and oh, they both have two rerolls. It'll be dead even. I don't think anybody wanted to win that one. <laughs> uh, the British are going to reroll their uh, one. British are up six to five. French gonna cast their try to reroll one of theirs. Uh, French are up eight to six. And I am kicking myself. I got through the closing fire. I'm gonna do that really quick up for the British. Uh, superior volley, yes, with uh, two extra combat dice for an attack column closing in. French are going to re-roll theirs again because they took three casualties on the way in. So we're just going to start over where the British are and they've already, the Brits have already used one re-roll. British are at six with one remaining re-roll. The French are at three with two remaining re-rolls. It's six even. Uh, French are going to re-roll their two. Seven to six. British going to re-roll their two. Lead unit suffers one CD and withdraws. If both supports take one CD, but stay there. That brigade of, uh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, Gruyere is just beat up. Uh, three of the four battalions all have six casualties, and one has one casualty, and they're like all disordered. <laughs> Not doing so good, just protecting the guards' right. It's about all they're doing. They're a placeholder. This brigade down here of uh, Clouseau's is a much better. He's got eight, six, three, and no casualties in his four battalions. Cavalry is the guard de cheval. Imperial slams into the Queen's own Hussars. Hussars are basically unsupported and uh, they're unformed against this nightmare of uh, three, well, six rerolls. The uh, guard is going to use their reroll and try to beat a three. Right now they're winning by five. They're going to go for the ultimate stomping. The Queen's Zone Hussars will retreat, more like flee in panic, take 66 CD. This cavalry mass will advance into those unformed uh, units over here. The Queen's Own Stars kind of goes back there, retreats behind the trees. The French cavalry charges on and slams into the unformed and shook uh, Royal Horse Guards with lots of casualties. Uh, they're going to go to hand to hand with the lawn. Uh, yeah, just the nightmares. The French cavalry splits the Seventh Coalition in half, kind of reverse that super quick. <laughs> Scott's Gray's like, what just happened? Uh, what a mess. Napoleon kind of couldn't keep up, so he went over here by the ninth just to kind of go. He didn't want to get taken captured by these guys just out accelerating him. So this ain't the movie. He ain't leading the charge. Uh, the unformed reserve Hanoverian unit from Kallenberg is going to fire a not-so-good volley at the ninth Legere as they come in. Uh, they do one casual to the ninth. Ninths will have three reroll, actually four rerolls because they're rank higher than these guys. Uh, they're gonna get three dice starting off with uh, one reroll 
for the Hanoverians. Seven seven Italians gonna try to beat that three. Let's try that again, baby. It's going so well. Two more. Eight seven Hanoverians gonna try to go for it, beat a three. Eight eight. Ninth Leisure is one reroll left. They're gonna go for it. The ninth Leisure will combat with Alon. A bit risque there, but all right, sounds good. All right, up against the unformed Russians, here comes the fresh uh, French line. R uh, Russians will shoot three dice plus one casualty dice. They did two damage. It, is a, it was a crap volley because their Russians were unformed. Uh, two damage plus a discipline check for the Russians. Looking for I mean, the French, looking for a seven. <laughs> French passed that. Let's do the, des the destiny roll here. <laughs> the Russians roll all the double sixes. Stedman becomes a bold brigadier. What a beast! Russians rolling three, French rolling two. Russians have one support. Uh, French have three. French have seven. Russians have five. Russians gonna reroll that one. Russians definitely should have saved some of those double sixes for something else. Uh, <laughs> what good's your brigadier's bold, but if your battalion gets blown away? Uh, yeah. French are gonna push it, man. They got a. Uh, Three rerolls here. Uh, French will go for it again. Victory. Going to drive the Russians back. Oh, I don't know if there's room for them to fit back there. Probably end up fleeing the battlefield. I can't remember what it is. Victory should be both on retreat. There's just no more room left to reform. They'd have to come straight back here and it just, I mean, I could like get a nail gun and, and damn, hammer them down, but basically they're falling off the edge of the world. They're retreating. Um, that brigade is still alive because he's got these two back here that never really got back in the fight. Um, that's not them. Where are they at? Uh, yeah, they got one Russian unit here. I think they've got two British units in there. But they're, uh, oof, they're hurting. That's a big old victory for the... Uh, Mazarini's first appearance, he wipes out that whole front. I think the writing's on the wall. Probably finished the turn up, but uh, this is looking like Napoleon is going to win at Ath and drive the uh, 7th Coalition off to the east or northeast. Yeah, it'll be on the inferior volley table just because they are uh, unformed. <laughs> Hammer three casualties on that to that Italian unit and a discipline check. Italians are Gonna be rolling three dice in the charge themselves because uh, you take three on the way in. Uh, discipline check could make it even more fun. All right, they passed that. Let's see how they do. Both sides rolling three dice. What a roll by the Italians. I almost broke out the green dice. Kind of glad I didn't. Uh, 11 for the Italians and a eight for the guard. Guard are gonna start their re-rolling. It's a draw. They're going to go to hand-to-hand. -hand. Oh, that'll be fun. And then over there, the uh, the Highlanders are going to fire at the uh, oncoming fresh Vistia Legion. <laughs> 79th gives himself a uh, fire discipline, doing one casualty to the Vistia Legion. Uh, these guys are not informed, which is great. They actually avoided the whole I'm going to retreat last turn. Ten to three. The Scottish throw down the gauntlet. Ten to six. They got two more for the uh, Fischer Legion. Ten to ten. They're going to scrum. Oh, yeah. I'm going to skip the whole movement. We're just going to do the three hand-to-hands and be done. And we'll start here as uh, the Vistia Legion fights the Highlanders. Straight up, five dice each as the uh, 79th fights the 1st Battalion of the Vistia Legion. 
the Polish win, uh, take the ground. The 79th will retreat off the table, unformed, and and fall back. Oh. All right, that's the first the first hand-to-hand. -hand. Going on to the guard. All right, it's five-on-five as the unformed uh, penalty takes away their guard advantage. Let's see what happens here. That's some kind of embarrassing. The Italians do two. The guard only does one casualty. The guard retreat off the table. <laughs> That's very sad. Anticlimactic battle there. The Knight Leger against the Hanoverians. Uh, the Knight has, the incorrigible has, or the incomparable, excuse me, have a uh, Elan versus a reservist unit. Seven dice for the uh, French versus four for the Hanoverians. Hanoverians don't inflict a single casualty and lose five guys. They get incinerated and are blown off the table. Oh, that was a, just, that's what I expected from the British Guard to do. They just destroyed them. And the uh, formed Imperial Guard de Cheval with Elan versus the Beat the Hell, the worn, unformed uh, Royal Horse Guards. Not the most devastating. Uh, Imperial Guard get four casualties on the on the uh, Royal Horse Guards, and they suffer two themselves. But they'll be decimated off the board. Uh, they'll flee off the battlefield. And uh, yeah, writing's on the wall here. I'm gonna break out the pointer, go over it. So just to review. Um, of course, the the stand by the Royal Welsh Fusiliers was monumental. It's fantastic. Uh, they did finally get destroyed, but it took the Imperial Guard coming across the entire battlefield and basically just mashing them into the ground that to, to get rid of them. Once they were gone, that was kind of the heart and soul of that whole brigade, so they faltered, ran, and dispersed. Um, the, the rest of the French have three line battalions over here. Uh, but really, the other two are pretty much worn to pieces they can they'll just basically get in the way and let the imperial guard do their thing i'm sure they would take that built up area in the next turn but uh you never know um i think this artillery piece would have continued to smoke them with these guys not being able to charge and sitting there this gun would have hammered all kinds of pieces into them um, I would have maybe thought about not even firing that because with these guys behind them, there would have been there would have been bounced through almost. So maybe uh, this French line battalion's in shambles, but still they never really they got blown back and they never really recovered. British cavalry decimated. Um, they would have got pushed off the battlefield. And basically, that would have been seven, that would have cut the British line in half. Even with these guys up here, it's it's not much. Um, these units effective. Like would have, this unit would have moved up a little bit and immediately got crushed by the uh, French cavalry. Uh, these guys, if they actually could have passed an order, could have done something. But uh, the ninth would have. I mean, this this unit's gone. That's gone. That's gone. They would have disordered and, and unformed like everything as they retreated again. And just a continual cascade of unformed units and. The French are so strong under salt. They just would have they would have taken the heights. And with the cavalry, you know, heading towards his headquarters, uh, Wellington would have taken whatever he had left and just tried to boogie out and fight again. And that's what's gonna happen. Um, great little victory by the uh, the French as they went three in a row. We got to. Uh, Seventh Coalition needs to turn this frown upside down. Uh, I do it. So I might try to paint two quick British battalions. Uh, I've, I've got them over there on the table, ready to go. They're already. Um, it's, yeah, I've just got to paint them up. I've actually got a couple of guys already finished. Um, get this out and uh, get another battle. But it's, you know, with two more units uh, on the field, and that should be awesome. But this uh, General Day Army Two. Uh, my thoughts. Wow, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was this was a learning game. Uh, I, I, I'll read your guys' comments to see 
what else I did wrong that I didn't catch. I call I try to catch most of the stuff. It's kind of nice. I play for a couple hours, then I edit for a couple hours, and then I play another turn. Um, but on a with a game like this, um, usually get about one game turn. It's 200 clips usually uh, on this camera. So it's a lot of editing. It's, I think I had 250 on one of the turns. It was insane. Uh, this might be in the same boat. So, uh, you know, by the time you get done playing two hours and editing for two hours, <laughs> you're like, oh, but the nice thing about the editing while I'm going is I, I can, I'm literally, I have to watch it back while I'm editing and I can catch mistakes. You know, or if I have questions like, well, uh, Phil Mora is uh, uh, basically, uh, extracting what or exporting what I've just done uh, I can go read so I can figure out what the heck I missed uh, if, you, if you like this system yeah you should do it Napoleonics is awesome um, I think any system I really play in Napoleonics this is this has probably been one of my most fun I think one because I got such a big army uh, you know armies on the table uh, and two uh, I think the changes that Dave Brown made to General Day are RMA two were, were right on the on the mark. Uh, as I said before uh, in a previous video, sometimes you'll get additions to a game that you love, and you're like, "Oh, why'd you do that?" Uh, this one, home run, uh, two giant thumbs up for me. Um, not sure if that means a lot in the real world, but uh, yeah, this was fantastic. Hope you enjoyed the game. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Hope your weekend's awesome, and I hope you're able to paint a lot of stuff or have an adult beverage while you're watching this. All right, uh, once again, these new lights are fantastic. Um, new storage is good. Everything's going good over here, and uh, I hope it's going good in your world. See you guys. Bye.